full time and, and has been everything that they needed to, to be. Series on the line, game three underway. And Alex Madeira works ahead in the count. He's hit leadoff all year for UNC in Scott Forbes' lineup. The grad student, five game hit streak entering today. And goes right after the second pitch of the game. This will send Nowak into the corner and a nice catch to get things started. You know, and you have to wonder how much with these guys. I mean, they've played in front of electric atmospheres all weekend, but obviously this one is, is special. It's a rubber match. It's two teams that it means a lot to. Uh, we'll see how much nerve plays into the early part of this game. This place is ready to explode. I mean, it's incredible. Two programs that have been the two most successful in the state the last 10 years, both regionally and in the postseason. They battle here in game three. And here's the player to watch coming in, Vance Honeycutt. His huge swing Friday night was the difference in game one. You know, when he's improved his batting average 100 points over the weekend, four home runs on the weekend. So definitely the guy that uh, if you, you know, circle a guy in the lineup, say you, you, know, you can't let this guy beat you, uh, it's definitely got to be uh, Mr. Honeycutt. Honeycutt in his draft eligible junior year is a top 10 draft prospect, according to multiple publications. Hunter challenges with a fastball there, and he's quickly ahead. You know, when that's part of the philosophy of this Pirate staff and, and the Pirate program at, at large is, you know, kind of fear nobody and go, you know, we're willing to play whoever wants to play is what you hear Coach Godwin say all the time. So a uh, chance to prove that here. We'll see uh, with, a, with kind of a head to count what, uh, what he has in store. Goes back to the cheddar and the first punch out for Jake Hunter. You think these fans don't know how big that is? Ninety-five plus from Hunter, who can really bring some velo. This East Carolina pitching staff comes in top ten in the country. One point nine ERA entering today. The starting pitching has definitely been the story for the Pirates, and, and obviously a, a little bit of an offensive uh, explosion yesterday with fifteen plus knocks, but. The starting pitching has been really, really good. The question, if there is one, is what the back end looks like. And, and I'm sure today uh, we'll see that. These guys aren't ready to go super deep into games. They got a, a really nice outing from, from Zach Root yesterday. Seven innings. Yeah, in which win. allows some, you know, some, some bullets to be saved down in the pen. But, uh, again, I think the bullpens are going to be the story. Casey Cook works ahead in the count. What a breakout year as a redshirt freshman last year. All ACC freshman team. And he reached base 44 straight times. That was a Carolina freshman record. You think of a program with over 100 draft players. This is quite a freshman season. No, I mean, it's incredible. 44 straight times of success. And this game is uh, obviously unheard of. Uh, but, but, you know, it, it's Carolina. And Scott Forbes and his staff do as good a job as anybody in the country of, of recruiting and bringing in players and impact guys at, at, you know, up and down the lineup. This pop-up might stay in play. As Williams runs out of room. But they, you know, again, it's the old, uh, you know, the old cliche. They, they don't really rebuild, they reload. And, and that's, I mean, you see that every year, really with both these clubs. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the Scott does an amazing job filling this roster. Jake Hunter on three and two. This is up and a leadoff runner on. Two outs here for Casey Cook. There's Scott Forbes. He's done an excellent job early in his tenure replacing Coach Mike Fox. Made it to a regional final last year. And a team now with some preseason expectations, not only in the ACC, but nationally here at number 15. You know, both these teams are, are, are here to go deep, right? They're not looking to win their conference. They're not looking to just uh, have a good season. They're looking to, to, to find a way to Omaha. And, and I'll tell you, a big key for that is a young man that's at the plate for the Tar Heels, the uh, Georgia transfer, who led the SEC in RBI last year uh, in Parks Harbor. So a guy that's not quite figured it out just yet relative to the numbers he put up last year, but uh, a guy that they, they surely expect big things from and and, you know, has the, has the ability to make this a two-run game in a hurry. Some attention over to the Carolina running game that's been extremely efficient, 14 of 15 among the top five teams in the country and running the bases through two weeks. Here's the Georgia transfer, Parks Harbor. And he's taking a big hack. 
you mentioned Harbor's numbers last year, but he's been off to a nice start this year as well. 350 average, already eight hits in the first six games. You know what's funny? I was going to mention that too. It's they, He's not quite where he was or what they hope that he will be for the lineup, but he is off to a nice start. The RBI numbers where they're looking for. That ball is ripped up the middle and a two out knock for Harbor. So all of a sudden, Carolina's stringing together a couple of two out plays. That's just a good job of not trying to do too much of that pitch, kind of taking, you know, taking what you're being given and, and, you know, inside yourself with your swing and stay in the middle of the ballpark. It's it's every coach's message, right? Stay, stay in the middle of the park and, and react. And you see him, again, takes that little cutter and, and just drives the ball right back through the box. What a moment for Quinnipiac grad transfer, Anthony D'Onofrio in this spot. Preseason second team All-American. Those are huge accolades coming in. Among the top 30 outfielders in the country. He's been off to a good start defensively. Looking to get the bat going at 222. Hunter challenges him right there for strike one. Quality pitch. Quality pitch there to get back in the count. And, you know, D'Onofrio hasn't seen this many fans in an entirety of a career at Quinnipiac if you, you know, add up what he's kind of played in front of this weekend. So I'm sure it's a little bit fast for him, and their, their expectation will be that he will settle in. This ball is rocketed to center. Johnson with some room and up against the track. That's a loud third out. It's Carolina stranding two early. It's a lineup hitting 320 coming in and facing a very young arm. True freshman Olin Johnson, only a second career start. Johnson, who reclassified, is now a true freshman out of Bellingham, Washington. And did not go very deep against Wagner, two and two-thirds, but elite-level stuff. Yeah, no question. Mid to upper 90s fastball. Uh, what's been described, and it, probably the ultimate compliment that can be paid to a breaking pitch is that he has an absolute banger breaking ball. Played it, uh, transferred to McCallie School in Tennessee, playing for former big leaguer Tim Costco there. A lot of success, state titles, player of the year. So, uh, yeah, a, a yet another quality recruit by, uh, by the Tar Heel staff. This is a young starting staff, three brand new starters. Neither have gone more than five innings. That'll be a big question for Scott Forbes in his bullpen today. And as you've already seen in this first inning, every base runner, every pitch, there's a bit of emotion here at Clark LeClaire. No, right. And, you know, and Carolina scuffled a little bit last weekend, although putting up a bunch of runs, you know, five errors in that Sunday game, and that's definitely not what the staff uh, uh, for, for the Tar Heels wants to see. They obviously clean baseball wins championships. It was a top 10 fielding team in the country last year for Carolina. Off to a bit of a shaky start, but the bats have carried the load. No question. Riley Johnson will hit leadoff for Cliff Goblin. He's had a nice series, three for nine, set in the stage. And some of the most elaborate sign cards you'll ever see. Johnson misses upstairs with Macon Hammond behind the plate today. You know the key for every young pitcher is get ahead with that first pitch, and we'll see if uh, O.J., as, a, as his teammates referred to him earlier, can, can find the strike zone and, and be competitive in this outing. Cliff Godwin's lineup, seven of the first eight all lefties against this right-hander true freshman. It's a lineup that came to life yesterday, 15 hits, and you can already hear the atmosphere here in Greenville. Yeah, I expect we'll hear, hear plenty of the purple gold chant as the Pirates get in score position. And again, we, enough can't be said for the atmosphere today. There's a four-pitch walk, and already a factor with a leadoff man on. How do you handle these emotions as a player if you're Carolina? You know what, it, 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 this is... Especially a young guy, right? I mean, this is a this is a quite an experience he's having. It's just a matter of deep breath, reset, and go back and do what he's done a thousand times, which is throw strikes. There's a reason he's in this spot. A well-tested, earned himself a spot in the rotation here. And now it's Carter Cunningham, the hottest hitter maybe in the state or the country this week, as the ball gets away from Stevenson. You know what? That's the value of the fake bunt, right? It's just enough of a distraction and may give you a chance to see what kind of infield rotations you get, but it creates that opportunity for kind of blinded to catch or pass ball and does the job for him. Tomas Frick, an All-American catcher last year, now in the, in the minors. Stevenson played a handful of games, but an early mistake.
That first pitch was a strike, so the count evens here to Stevenson, or to Cunningham, I should say, who was electric yesterday especially. Four for four with three runs scored in that output for the Pirates. Yeah, any guy that comes into the season or comes into this game hitting 500 at this depth in the year is off to an incredibly hot start. Two programs with Omaha expectations, and you can feel it here in this first inning. And now a hitter's count to Cunningham. You know, maybe most impressive was the graphic that was just up 417 with runners in scoring position. You know, it, it's great that guys hit, get on base, uh, but productive at bats with opportunities to help your team is what puts you over the over the edge as a as an elite hitter. Listen to this crowd on 3-1. Another walk for Johnson. Back-to-back -back runners on for ECU. You know, when you watch Johnson pitch, everything has everything that you want as far as I'll see how it, how it works here if he can settle in. And again, you know, don't put it past Cliff Gowan and the Pirates to try to force some action here coming off the conference. We saw an arm getting ready. That was Dalton Pence in the pen. So here's Jacob Starling, who's playing in his 141st career game. He was electric yesterday as well for the Pirates. Four for five, a couple of runs scored. And his bat's starting to heat up here in week two. And there's nobody that's had bigger moments, bigger hits in his time here than Jacob Starling has had for these Pirates. Two early walks for young Olin Johnson. And that one, a little friendly fire into his own dugout. These next two hitters, Starling and Jenkins Coward, all AAC, All-American candidates here for East Carolina. What an ideal start if you're ECU offensively. Yeah, now that, you know, the Tar Heels want to minimize, and the Pirates obviously want to take advantage. Now, bunt attempt for Starling. That'll bring up Jace Vanderbreak in the first out. A little situational baseball there from Cliff Godwin. And never doubt that that's, that's part of the repertoire of, of, of this Pirate offense. Uh, again, the Tar Heels weren't fooled by that. Pass off, made a play, collect out at first base, understanding it's early in the game. A lot of, lot of baseball left to play. No matter what happens here, this Tar Heel offense is very capable of putting up a lot of runs as well. So we'll see how it goes the rest of the way. Uh, you know, Jenkins Coward is is obviously a guy that the Pirates have big expectations from. Off to a fast start as well, 448 RBI. So, uh, you know, the, the, the deal here for me is the young pitcher's got to settle in and, and be able to compete the zone. First pitch. It's down for a base hit. Jenkins Coward delivers two more and an early start for East Carolina. That's the fifth hit of the series for Jacob Jenkins Coward. You know, what's just staying within yourself again, using the middle of the field. What's lost on there? If you'll notice the base running by Cunningham at second base, he gets far enough to give himself the opportunity to score, knowing that there's no tag. Freeze, read the ball down and score easily. That's really, really good base running uh, by the senior from second base. The two early walks come back to bite Johnson here. And all of a sudden, this atmosphere, talk about throwing dynamite in the first inning. You know, when you have to wonder how much further can they go with the young right-hander in, 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 in multiple ways, you know, th these outings have impact on future outings and, and the psyche of a young man. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the Tar Heel bullpen even pick up the pace a little bit. It looks like they've got a left-hander down there, which, which would be a natural move against a, a largely left-handed lineup for the Pirates. Eight of nine lefties for Cliff Godwin today. First hit of the game makes it 2-0 ECU. Jenkins Cowart on the move. Little run and hit action, and Vandebreek solid there at third base. That will advance him to second. Remember for Carolina, Friday night ace and All-American candidate Jason Knapp was ruled out for the year with an injury back in late January. So this rotation... A little piece together. Connor Bover, who was a longtime starter, has moved to the pen. So three new faces in Scott Forbes' rotation. 
Facing a veteran Pirate order, including two-year starter behind the play, Justin Wilcoxon. You know, two out hits, too, are such a big deal in teams that are trying to go deep and win state, cha state championship. Excuse me, Ren. Have a chance to play for national titles and, and, and go deep in the season. Two out scoring is critical. Nice take from Wilcoxon for a 2 0 count. Wilcoxon among the top 25 catchers in the country, according to D1 Baseball. He's had a good start, three for eight in this series. And Johnson un unable to locate his secondary pitches right now. Which yeah. as a hitter really changes your mindset as well. Man, it does. And I, I, I'm watching the young man on the mound just kind of, he's having one of those moments where he, he just almost can't wish it to where he wants it to go. And, and, and you know, when you feel that way, it's kind of a defeated a defeated feeling. And, and it's hard as a, young, as a young college pitcher to get back in there. Good use of the changeup on 3-0. Love the aggressive hack there from Wilcoxon. You know, in a 3-1 count to a guy that, that has the pop that, that Wilcoxon has, no home runs on the year yet, but had uh, double-digit home runs last year. Again, first base open, have to be a little bit careful with him here. Now the 3-1 is rocketed to first. Nice stab by Harbor and great coverage by the true freshman. Jacob Jenkins Coward gets things started. Not enough accolades for, for what Scott has done in his career. Scott led Carolina to its 10th ever Super Regional. Just two years back. You know, and I'm going to say he's top ten in the country with shoe game for uh, for head coach. He, you know, he's always uh, in vogue for the young guys. The Jordan brand kicks always add style. As Alberto Azuna, who's got some tremendous pop, fights one away. Last season was hampered due to an injury, but two years ago, 20 home runs in his first year at Carolina. All ACC standout. Yeah, Azuna's got big pop. Jake Hunter challenges with a slider. And Azuna has really shortened up his stance. Very patient take here. And a pretty quality 0-2 pitch there. Not, you know, sets up his next opportunity. And Hunter doing a good job of getting ahead. Ozuna and the Tar Heels, they were explosive offensively. They scored 55 runs coming into the weekend. There was no team better among Division I programs. Carolina pulling on a tight one Friday, ECU 7-4 yesterday. And now Hunter on 2-2. Two and two. Goes by him with the heat. That was 91 up and in. Fastball up and in above the strike zone. Hard to lay off that pitch. And uh, Ozuna's the uh, the victim of the quality, the quality pitch up and in there. So, I mean, it, you know, we're seeing more and more of that where guys are pitching above the barrel. Spin rate such an important uh, measurable now. In baseball, and, and again, saw it demonstrated right there by uh, by Jake Hunter. Also, the tempo that Hunter's working with—he is quick to the plate. The Stevenson foul was one off. That's a byproduct of pitching coach Austin Knight and the philosophy of this program. They want to challenge hitters at the plate. Yeah, you're not going to see any uh, pirate pitchers work very slow. Obviously, with the regulation for for all of college baseball at the pitch clock, but these pirate pitchers do not, uh, or very rarely, will bring it into play. So Luke Stevenson, the first-year starting catcher, he was an elite prospect. Top 10 player in the whole state of North Carolina coming out of the Wake Forest area. And this do-or-die rubber match fouls that one off. Good hands by Brandon yeah, Riley, the first base coach. Nice play down there. You know, when it's just warm enough where as a coach you'll consider fielding that ball. If it's any cooler, you're like, no, I'm letting it go. I don't want to. I don't, want to, I don't want to deal with that for the rest of the game. Low 50s today, but it is heating up here in this ballpark. Two top 15 programs battling it out. That time Stevenson lays off. An 0 for 4 start at the plate. He's been a part of both games here in this series. This time, Hunter goes down Broadway to get another strikeout, give him three. Yeah, I think that's a situation where Stevenson's looking something a little different. That's uh, that's a fastball that caught a lot of plate and just enough to freeze the young catcher. And uh, again, the, the, the biggest difference that we're seeing right now is Hunter 
is uh, is commanding the zone, which gives him an opportunity to compete and pitch off of his pitches a little different than what we're getting out of the young starter from Carolina. You see the K count here in the jungle. This place is standing room only, sold out. It's hard to find a place to stand here in Greenville. After excellent crowds the last two days, 6,000 plus down at the minor league park, Segru Stadium in Fayetteville, and nearly 4,000 in Chapel Hill on Friday. Yeah, there'll be 15, 16,000 people that will have had the opportunity to watch these teams compete uh, live this weekend and, and countless others that are tuned in with us right now. It's, it's a big deal, not only in North Carolina, but nationally in the world of college baseball. Here is Jackson Vandebrake, third sibling to play college baseball. And now the 0-2. His older brother, Jace, was a standout all-conference at Gonzaga. He's now in the minors and his other brother, Justin, played at Washington State. They're out of Yakima, Washington, way up north. Slow start here in year two for Jackson. And a nice take to even the oh, count. Wow. Pirate fans are going to definitely want that one, and, and as does Jake. Remember last year, though, Vanderbrake, 40 walks as a freshman. Excellent eye in year one. So Hunter changes speeds for the punch out, striking out the side here in the second. Again, the story of the day, Jake Hunter commanded the zone, having the ability to go right at the proverbial door year after year. Uh, every year their expectation is to break it down, and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see both these teams have that thought process every time they take the field. The elephant in the room you speak of is a trip to Omaha. Both teams have made supers the last two years. That pitch stays outside. Carolina has a similar hill to climb. Two trips to the national finals back in 06 and 07. But yet to win the, the proverbial national title. And now the freshman with a quick conversation with his catcher. Yeah, you know, he's missed, missed around the zone. But, but I think it's fair to say badly with those first two pitches. The other thing you find in these situations with your pitching staff is if he tries to get too fine here, you, you don't want him to serve up a pitch that ends up being a home run. Now, uh, I, I think that's also maybe we're seeing the, the traditional little bit of a stall, uh, but, but still not a ton of urgency from the Carolina pin. Second career start for Olin Johnson, and he's falling way behind to Luke Nowak. You know, he's got that consistent miss, right? It's arm side. He's got the mechanics to kind of fall him off to the first base side, and it seems like that's creating a little bit of his inconsistency. There we see the, the left-hander uh, up and heating up a little bit for the Tar Heels. That's a four-pitch walk. And remember the first inning, it was back-to-back -back walks that led to two runs. You know, and those four pitches were basically the same pitch. So three walks early for the Pirates. And again, I think this kind of cements the theory that we've had and have discussed that, you know, the, the bullpen depth may not be what the Tar Heels need it to be right now, uh, or you would think a change would be imminent. He's The young man is really struggling, and, and this does bring Coach Forbes out. So the pitching change is in order here yeah. for UNC. Yeah. So Scott Forbes with some quick words for his talented freshman, Olin Johnson, who, like you said, just had trouble controlling the fastball today. Yeah, number put something on the scoreboard. Uh, so that's kind of where both teams are. We'll see how it shakes out. Fan favorite and senior Cam Clonch steps in. Oh, a throw gets away from the first baseman, Harbor. And now the speed of Nowak is on full display. All the way to third and in there. Wow. Hey, you know, that ball didn't get that far away. That's two things you see there. That was a, a, a really smart base running. So he comes back into the bag on the throw, and he steps kind of into the, the first baseman's chest. So you'll see as he comes in, he steps into the chest. Now that, breaks, that, that prevents the first baseman from getting to that ball that's on the back side of him. Ball gets just far enough away that the Speedy Nowak has really no problem getting to third base. All of a sudden, the man at third with nobody out. This is an area where Cliff Godwin's been aggressive in small ball today. Oh, look, it wouldn't, nothing would surprise me. Lots of ways to score from third base. Again, uh, Coach Godwin knows that, that scoring this run wins this inning, and you continue to do that, and you win a lot of games. Deep fly ball could do the trick as well. This is Vance Honeycutt with a high-level arm, but no option on that one. A sack fly makes it 3-0. Great job by Clanch again. 
if you notice where the continual success is for this club and for, for most good college hitters, is hard of the field. You'll watch Clotch a swing here. No, no, I mean, he's not trying to do anything other than get the you know, deep fly ball, score the run. It's a team run. It's a professional at bat. And, again, it, 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 it puts you in position to have, now they've won this inning. Taking advantage of back-to-back -back Carolina mistakes in two straight innings. And now it's Joey Barini in the bottom of this lineup. 9-1-2 coming up for the Pirates, who scored nine runs a game coming in. Carolina, of course, has averaged 14 runs a game in the first two weeks. These clubs could certainly light it up. You know, we talked about clean baseball, and you see that example over there. One, one, one miscue, guy advances to third base, so easy to score from third for these guys. Those are the kind of things that, that dictate these types of series. This ball's rocketed to center. And the All-American Vance Honey cut all over it for the second out. This is a ballpark that traditionally plays small, but with the weather today, it, it could play pitcher friendly if you use it right. Yeah, it, you know, anything to center field here, kind of within the, t the two light poles that are out straight away, uh, it, it, it's a kind of a cavernous park out there. Where you get in trouble is if you start working down the lines or to these outside uh, light poles, it, it can shorten up. Now Riley Johnson in the top of the Pirate order. We've noted those three walks in the first two innings. ECU was 12th in the country last year in drawing free passes. Very patient approach. As Dalton Pence falls behind. And an environment like this in a serious decider. Those extra runners could really play a factor. All three have scored today. Doug Stevenson trying to buy that pitch for his uh, for his pitcher up there. You know, uh, the the new theory of catching is is the 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 the, the, the bolt strike, and you see him doing a really good job of kind of working that corner, sticking that pitch, trying to let the umpire have a good look at it, but just just miss him. That's an element that has allowed Salvador Perez of the Royals to excel in the big leagues. He led the league last year in strikes earned. Like that frame right there. Good that, work. That's, that's a great example. That was kind of on cue there. He kind of you know brought that one back to the zone and, and was able to, to buy the strike. So now Dalton Pence is back in business thanks to Luke Stevenson. Here's his payoff pitch. Line drive to center with Honeycutt all over it. So with the pitching chain, you can tell these two programs love battling each other out. 96th all-time meeting. Four of the last five matchups have been one-run games. And the lone difference was yesterday with a 7-4 ECU win. So Colby Wilkerson, multi-year starter on the infield. He's moved to shortstop this year for UNC. He'll hit ninth and complete Scott Forbes lineup. Kind of the first time we've seen this for Jake Hunter tonight, or this, uh, this afternoon, where he's fallen behind 2-0 pretty quickly. Wilkerson flares one to left with Noack all over it. All of a sudden, five straight retired and with the lead here for Jake Hunter. You know, and that's philosophy, pitch to contact, throw soft contact, right? Try to be efficient, extend your outing. It saves your bullpen. It helps your team stay in the rhythm of the game. He, you know, it fell behind 2-0. And the last two nights, you Savage goes six, Root seven for ECU. Yep, that's right. The, the starting pitching has been very, very good for the Pirates. There's pitching with some defense as well, and Hunter helps himself. Again, it's efficiency, right? I mean, he, you know, he turned a 2-0 to the first batter into back-to-back -back outs. Uh, that's about as, as efficient as you can be. This pitching staff under Austin Knight, hard to translate through two weeks, but to have a one ERA, that, that's pretty impressive. And again, I, I, you know, there, there have been some walks, and maybe if there's been a, 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 you know, a chink in the armor, it would be the number of walks, but, but still manageable numbers. And, and you're right, the, the ERA is special. Speaking of special, here's an All-American candidate, Vance Honeycutt. That strikeout about the only thing slowing down this third-year draft-eligible prospect. His defense is certainly one thing. He's been on SportsCenter three different times for top ten catches. Yeah, it looked like Jake Hunter tried to do a little too much with that breaking ball, maybe overthrew it a little bit, knowing that, you know, this guy is the guy. We'll see what he does 2-0 here. 
comes back with it, a much better pitch. Let it do what it's supposed to do, fall through the bottom of the zone, try to induce a, a ground ball. So Honeycutt, with three hits in these first two games, has now reached base safely in 41 straight. If you go back to March of last season, just a tremendous start. As this ball is rocketed out of play. An opportunity here and a couple rows deep. I mean, it, that was as close as it could be without staying in the field of play. Huh? It was uh, right there, both Wilcox and Cunningham chasing it out of bounds, giving it a good look. And I, I'm going to tell you, I, I've watched Wilcox in a bunch on those catcher pop-ups, and as a former catcher, that's something you take pride in. He chases them to the last second. He wants the opportunity to get that free out if he can help his pitcher out. With Greenville legend Mike Mullis here on Evan Budjovic. Game three of this rubber match, top 15 battle. And Honeycutt works the count full. You know, this situation where you are facing such a dynamic player like Honeycutt, but you're pitching with a three-run lead, it, it is very early, but a solo home run does not uh, does not cause a problem for you necessarily, so an out right here is critical. Another foul ball. Good at bat brewing here. Pitch eight coming up. And I guess what I mean by that is you would far rather Honeycutt, let, let's go after him, try to get him out, as opposed to give him a free pass to first base, and then you turn around facing a hitter like Parks Harbor. Honeycutt does have a home run against the Pirates in his tenure, both this year and last season. Jake Hunter ready to go on pitch eight of the at-bat. And a good one. Fastball challenges the All-American, and he gets the strikeout. I tell you what, that's a gutsy pitch. Jake Hunter just reached back, dialed up the old number one, 91 miles an hour top. This year's team offensively, Mike, might be even better than last year's that as the team hit 292. Yeah, you know what? It, I, I think you saw it right there with Cunningham showing bond. It, it's just it's the selfless nature of the program. Good pick there by Harbor and a nice start for Carolina. But to your point on those bats. Yeah, the selfless nature of the program that, hey, we're going to come up, figure out what we have to do to give ourselves a chance to generate opportunities, runs. Uh, but, yeah, th this club is it, coming into the year, and really the first time he really got a good taste of it was yesterday. But the offense expect the offensive expectations are probably at a at – a, at a recent high. The team coming in hitting 320 in the first two weeks. And Starling's out in front. Pretty good little off speed pitch by Pence there. Jacob Starling, who has postseason history in this ballpark, back to the Super Regional against Texas two years prior. Some big games in the senior's career. He's down one and two. Earlier today, he had a sack bunt that set up the two-run first. Cliff Godwin describes him as an absolute gamer. Not sure prototypical three-hole hitter, but making things happen. Not that time, though. Good pitch for Dalton Pence. Yeah, now you're seeing the value of, of, of again, competing in his own and, and throwing strikes and being able to, to utilize your, you know, your various pitches. Uh, very, very different game as we see Pence settle in and, and you know, kind of making short work to this point of, of this half inning for the Pirates. Ooh, I think that got him. Tight. And it yeah, does I thought hit it the got hand him. of Jake. Yeah, I thought it got him. Okay, that's ruled a strike, yep. as a matter of fact. And now Cliff Goblin with a question. Just to start a conversation for sure. I, I thought that got him right off the pitch. It was either, it may be the knob of the bat, I mean, but I, I felt pretty confident that it was enough. Yeah, there it is. And knob typically of the bat. you hear that as well yep. if you're an umpire. Yep. JJC doing all he can to get out of the way. Making Hammond all over it with that call, so it's an 0-1 count. This is a hitter who's taken huge strides now in year three. The average is up to 462. I'm going to tell you the improvements this year are marked. I mean, you know, I had a tough injury last year and kind of struggled through the back half of the season, but coming off an incredible freshman campaign and, and this year has been, I mean, has been as good as anybody in the country, save his teammate Carter Cunningham. So, yeah, great to see uh, Jenkins Cowher swinging the bat at the level he's swinging it. There were three big losses from last year. Lane Hoover, a scrappy hitter. Josh Mullen, 15 home runs. And then Alec Makarevich to NC State. There was a need for power in the heart of this lineup. 
Yeah, you know, and if there's a fault with JJC, it's he's such a good hitter, such incredible eye hand coordination that that he can uh, sometimes offer him pitches that he shouldn't, and that was a sign of maturity right there. That was a close enough pitch, and I think a year ago we see Jenkins Coward offer to that pitch, uh, shows the discipline there to lay off of it, and two out base runner. So that extends the inning for Dalton Pence, who's already pitched two innings. That was on Friday night in the two to one Carolina win. So here's Greenville product, Dixon Williams, homegrown. Nice pitch from Pence. Pretty good opener. Those front door sliders. I mean, that's that's a pretty good opener. And this, you know, the, the, the deal here, he the, this the action typically with left-handers is you've, you've got to defend against the arm side run. Well, you can open up the other side of the plate. It, it makes it tough for a hitter to stay on, you know, to stay on the pitch. And, and, and I mean, Pitts is doing a great job again because of, because of being effectively uh, in and around the zone, whether it is a ball or a strike, it still gives him something to pitch off of. And he's opened up both sides of the dish, and that makes anybody, you know, uh, hard to get to. Pence challenging Williams here, whose dad was a golfer at UNC Wilmington. You could tell how much it matters to Williams, the homegrown kid, who in next year's draft among players in the American Athletic, the, the conference ECU's in, top 10 draft prospects with a ton of potential here for the sophomore. Now the 0-2, and again, spoiling one off. No, the former uh, D.H. Conley Viking played for uh, Jason Mills and is definitely, a, as you said, homegrown, diehard pirate. And, it, look, you can catch his dad here at scrimmages, and any time he's got a free minute, he's here and invested in the program and watching his son play and uh, Dixon making the most of his opportunity this year. I want to see his dad at Pinehurst for the U.S. Open this year. Tremendous golfing state here in the Carolinas. So now a one-two count. That shot gives you a sense of how special this rivalry is. Rubber match, sold out crowd at Clark LeClaire. And Williams deposits one to left. Challenging dive, and Cook is all over it. Nice catch there. Hangs up that ball, tailing hard back to the line. And two teams that have a lot of kids that are really familiar with each other, play with each other in summer and high school. So, yeah, just a cool series to see. These two quality of clubs, both from the state of North Carolina, get together and mix it up in a rubber match on Sunday. Carolina won two of three last year with one of those games being moved back with some weather issues early in the season. So far, UNC game one in a tight 2-1 game. East Carolina's bats came alive yesterday. 7-4 now. Early in game three, it's good pitching here from Jake Hunter pounding the zone against Casey Cook. You know, and that's what he's done so well right there. If he does fall behind, he finds a way to get back in it. Swing the count back in his favor, at least try to work even, and that opens up a lot of opportunity for him. Remember, it was Casey Cook's great diving catch a moment ago, and if this was Sports Center, he hit a home run in this at bat. It's how things work. Yeah, how many times have we seen that? It's, 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 it is crazy how that works. Cook is just one for eight in this series. And now a full count. Five strikeouts, the real story for Jake Hunter early. Yeah, you know, we're, we're into the fourth, 50 pitches, so so fairly efficient. You know, 12, 15 is, is kind of where you like to live and uh, per inning. So, yeah, good outing to this point. His payoff pitch is fouled away. Let's head it over to the beverage tent. There'll be a lot of fans enjoying that tent today. What a great atmosphere. You know, so I guess uh, the, the Tar Heels returned the favor of the color rush uni today after the Pirates wore the uh, their uh, powder purples on Friday. Boy, that's a close pitch. You know, leadoff walk here for Casey Cook. Really good job laying off that pitch for uh, for ball four. But, yeah, we see the Heels rolling here in their, their, their powder unis today. Yeah, a little further in than it looked initially. Again, another good job by, by a catcher of, of at least making it look interesting. 
Carolina blue, East Carolina gold. Hard to get much better. No, nope, that's Two right. dominant colors, and especially in this state. And as Parks Harbor fouls one off in a region with eight combined ranked programs in both North and South Carolina. This really gives you a sense of how important this game is and how regionally these programs sit. Oh, yeah, it's 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 crazy with, with you know, the, the big dog right now being Wake sitting number one, coming off a midweek loss to UNC Greensboro. Clemson also in the top ten in the Carolinas, and then Coastal completes it at 25. Something also tells me this week, with Campbell's big win over ECU, they could be right back in the rankings soon. Completely agree with you. Jake Hunter getting ahead of the Georgia transfer, who rockets a line drive to short. Hit it as hard as you could on the screws, but Joey Barini's all over it. You know, for a second, I got stuck between the monitor and actually looking at it, and I thought Barini had the old knock it down, pick it up in the effort to turn the double play. But, man, that thing's close. That thing had some dive on it, didn't it? Definitely it definitely spun in his mid there Yeah, it had some, I thought that's what we had. I thought he'd kind of knock that thing down, and we were going to see the uh, headsy double play turn. That's next level thinking, right? Because you got to plan ahead a little well, bit. Well, I there. mean, you know, it's instincts. It's instincts. Well, as all good ball players will say, here with Mike Molas, I'm Evan Budjevich. A tight game three to decide this series. You get a feeling the winner of this weekend with Oregon State going down to Arkansas might have a chance to sneak into the top 10. Very likely. Clemson, of course, in danger of losing its series to Kennesaw State. They're in a battle here in game three. That ball hits the catcher, Wilcoxon. Wilcoxon says he's all good, and that's the – those are the nuances of baseball that a lot of people don't recognize. You know, the, the umpire's not doing anything other than giving, you know, the catcher a chance to catch his breath, and uh, that's just a common decency and common courtesy for guys that spend their time back there with the tools of ignorance on. Did you call the catching gear the tools of ignorance? Uh, I spent a lifetime back there, and I've been. I've, I've heard that so many times. The tools of ignorance. You gotta. You gotta be a special breed to put it on and get back there. But in my opinion, it's the greatest position in all of in all of sports. Now the one-one pitch. That time he's all over it behind the plate. I think what he pulled the string on that. It's a nice, uh, really nice one-one pitch. Little change piece there. Jake Hunter's ability to mix pitches. He's had success with the high fastball. And now he's searching for strikeout number six. Anthony D'Onofrio, who started his career at Stony Brook, and what a nice win over LSU this week for the Seawolves. Again, just the, uh, just the nature of college baseball. You, you, you just don't know on any given day. Now the 2-2. He has popped up. Opportunity here for Williams. And that door is shut. Yeah, Dixon was playing a little more up the middle than he usually would be as the Pirates' defense is in a, a kind of a modified shift or with Barini playing straight away behind second base. So ball hung up a long time. Dixon gave him plenty of time to go there and take a look, but no chance. That was probably 10, 15 feet deep. D'Onofrio had some power at Quinnipiac. 23 career home runs in two seasons. In a tight battle with Jake Hunter, who goes back to 2-2. Another pop-up. Nowak coming in. He'll call off his third baseman, and there's the second out. Yeah, that's one of those where uh, if you're Dixon Williams and you're drifting back there, you're, you're just wanting to hear that left fielder say, I got your partner, you, you can peel off. And you, you can see him kind of looking over his shoulder. I'm sure it's a little bit loud down there. But uh, that was one of those that definitely left fielder's ball, good job of communicating, and no walk uh, recording the out. That's yeah. when you're stuck in the Costco line. You need someone else to say, hey, this yeah, lane's yeah. open, right. right? You don't want right. to get stuck behind yeah. 10. That's right. So you see the shift swing the other way. Dixon taking away the line here. Now Barini playing kind of straight up the middle, uh, even to a, a step to the shortstop side of the bag. Ozuna chops one foul. Remember, the major league game, this is not allowed anymore with the shifting and the analytics side of it. But in the college game, it, it still can allow hitters to, to play against that shift if they want to. And look, if, if Osuna wants to lay a bunt down and push it past the first baseman, the Pirates will take that right now and not even throw him another pitch. The DH fouls one off. I mean, we've already discussed the, the power he has. And, and again, if he wants to play that game, that, you know, with two outs, they, they will gladly take it. 
Ozuna with 34 career home runs. Here's Jake Hunter's 0-2, and the slider just misses. That's a perfect 0-2 pitch. It had to hit the catcher right where he was sitting, which is off the dish. Uh, the fans really don't have the perspective that we have and that you have at home watching this on TV. That's, a, that's an ideal 0-2, and now again, it opens up a lot of the plate. Ozuna hanging around. And the 1 2 is fouled off. This is one area of a Scott Forbes coach team. Always a good team of working the count and fighting off pitches. Yeah, no question. And I mean, that's quality baseball teams at large, right? They, they you know, find a way to win with two strikes, find a way to, to score with two outs, and, and you know, again, extend, extend the pitcher's numbers and, and, and make the effort to get into the bullpen. So here's Jake Hunter's 66th pitch. This one might this stay on the skied. infield. Wilcoxon stares into the sun, and he's got it. So Jake Hunter getting his kicks with four innings on that Route 66. His Pirates are up three. A, a lot of really epic high school baseball games. So, yeah, big deal. We may get a chance at some point to see a, a Pitt County matchup if, if we get Matthias in the game for Carolina and, and Dixon Williams at the plate. And then the Zebulon native, Aiden Howe, comes in. He's 6'6". Explosive arm, and Justin Wilcox and fouls went off. Yeah, JUCO transfer from Fayetteville Tech, right down, uh, right down the road where, you know, where, where the where the game took place last night. An associate of Pitt County, if you will. There you go. Group it all together. One thing for sure, these two programs. You talk about marquee names. Two of the winningest programs in the state the last ten years. Yeah, I know the Pirates are really – I mean, you know, Wilcox has had some success this weekend, but it's certainly not looked himself uh, with, with kind of the, the power numbers and, and even some of his A-Bs. Uh, good take on that 93-mile-an-hour fastball. But the Pirates would like to see him get there. You see, you know, Coach Godwin's down there yelling words of encouragement. He's a big part of the offense and a guy that, you know, had been contemplated as a DH slash catcher. Uh, and, and right on cue kind of gets up and, uh, off the fist and up the middle. Good play there by Wilkerson to get the first out. Carolina coming into this game, and you noted last week the five errors against Wagner. That, that's been a point of emphasis for Scott Forbes early. Yeah, you know, and, and we've seen it both seen it on the Pirates side of the baseball too, right, where there were uh, some questionable drop fly balls, and there's been a uh, drop tag at second base on a called steal. And so both teams kind of trying to find their way early defensively. And it, it, the, the irony is, both these teams have just traditionally and historically in, in the in the in the tenures of these coaches, both teams have played such great defense. So, but kind of the cruelty of baseball. You feel like you've got pitch and you can hit, and then all of a sudden the thing that you felt like you could really hang your hat on is where you struggle. Think about Dustin Ackley at Carolina, elite infielders. There's plenty more names, but you know, these two teams have always filled the ball well. Right now, though, it's Aiden Howe falling behind in the count to Luke Nowak, who walked earlier today. You know, we've seen Luke's uh, speed on display earlier, going from first to third on the on the attempted pick. Uh, again, not afraid to lay one down here. He shows some power this time with a fly ball to right to Norfrio with room, and all of a sudden that park hangs on to keep it in. Yeah, that, that you know that that's definitely not uh, Luke's. Luke's game necessarily and he kind of looks like he gets this one off one handed a little bit inside he fought to stay inside didn't get the good part of the baseball bat on the ball but uh, kind of a lazy fly ball out there to you know in front of the student section and, and a lot of disappointed people out yeah, there. yeah right? they, they were looking for a souvenir one of the best atmospheres you'll see in the country here today a sellout at Clark LeClaire Stadium This has been a two-year running of this new rivalry. Three-game series really adds some intensity to it. Second weekend of the year. As Aiden Howe gets strike one. Yeah, clock shakes on. Yeah, that was a strike. I don't know if you saw two right before that pitch. He takes a peek down there to third base. We kind of get a feel for where he is. Kind of talking himself through this at bat. And disappointed that he missed that fastball. 
All of a sudden, if you're Carolina, this is an important zero to slow down a red-hot ECU offense. No question. That was Clonch fists one foul. They would have shown he could do was get inside on left-handers, and that's a big deal. Aiden Howe in only his third career appearance. He threw in the midweek Tuesday and over Bears one at 92. He definitely has that uh, that frame that you like to see out of the big right handers and the velocity to kind of match up with it. Now a full count to Clunch. Break the ball top of the zone that just doesn't have the bite he needs. 3 2. Big pitch for Howe here. Crowd comes to life. And called strike three. Aiden Howe pulling the bender to end the inning. Have a chance to score some runs. That's how you win these big ball games. Jake Hunter, one strikeout shy of his career best, and that was last week against a Ryder program. A little different caliber in terms of competition hitting wise. We noted with UNC 46 runs in the Wagner series sweep. You know, it's strange the Pirates score 30, and uh, they, 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 they were almost doubled up by the by the Tar Heels last weekend. So it's, yeah, both teams can uh, can certainly put put runs on the board. Here's Luke Stevenson in the bottom third of the Carolina order. This was big shoes to fill with Tomas Frick, multi-time All-ACC catcher. Stevenson was more in a DH role last year. Did start a, just over 10 games. It seemed like Tomas Frick was at Carolina forever. I mean, he was just that kind of steady guy back there, a, 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 an incredible player. This is an elite high school prospect coming out of Wake Forest High School. Among the freshmen in all of the ACC, D1 Baseball has him as the number three impact freshman. You know, in Wake Forest High School, that area in general has a quite a tradition in, in producing players that go on and have great collegiate and, and, and even, you know, pro professional careers. So he's just another one in a long string, again, kind of like what we see coming out of uh, Pitt County, and it goes back to how strong baseball is in the state at the collegiate level. This ball has hit a mile into the sky. Barini calls everybody off and makes the catch. So seven fly ball outs early for Jake Hunter. Yeah, that's that one that stays up there forever. Just keep your feet moving, never uh, get get caught, you know, still underneath it and, and, and let it take you well at where it may because it's going to have some bend as it What do you make of those splits, right? So the strikeouts are one thing, but a fly ball pitcher today. Yeah, you know, kind of interesting. I, 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 I wouldn't typically have said – that I would expect to see Hunter throw a bunch of fly balls. But, um, you know, we've seen him pitch in top half of the zone, and we've seen some lift on the breaking balls. Here's Jackson Vandebreek. And then Hunter starting to rip those change-ups and breaking balls in there for strikes. Yeah, doubled up on breaking balls there. And, uh, you know, when, when you get to where you could do that and, and get a guy 0-2, again, it opens up the whole toolbox. Senior Jackson Vandebreek down in the 0-2 hole. Again, another really good 0-2 pitch. Pitch with intent. You know, you hear folks talk about wasting an 0-2 pitch. You never want to waste a pitch, right? Go, go after a pitch. Throw that pitch for what you're going to do next. And you may see the, the, the fastball climb here. Instead, yes. right down the middle. Yeah, he just went right at him with it. So Vandebreek becomes the sixth strikeout victim. Yeah, you, this, can, you can tell, right, though, the hitter expecting one thing yeah, and getting another. Yeah, and this is uh, this is Hunter doing exactly what he needs to do. This is, if he can have a quick out here, it's this, it's, the, it's nearly the equivalent of them scoring another run, getting him back in the dugout and trying to shift momentum back to uh, back to the Pirates side of the field. Nine-hole hitter Colby Wilkerson now up. Wilkerson started every game at shortstop last year. He was one of the few to stay healthy. For Carolina, they lost Vance Honeycutt come tournament time. Osuna is well out with injury, but here's the healthy Wilkerson popping one up. And there you go. Six straight retired for Jake Hunter. He's cruising through five scoreless. So again, another testament to the character of, of, of these athletes. More than just the game. That's certainly a point. And you can tell by this community investment here in Greenville how much it matters. A baseball team that it's off to a 4-2 and two start. Both these programs right among the top 15 in the country. Joey Barini, 9-1-2 in the Pirate order. 
There's only been two combined hits in this game. Very pitching dominant. But the walks have been the bugaboo for Carolina as Aiden Howe works in his second inning. Yeah, walks at the miscue over at first base are uh, a big part of it. You know, it looks to me like Hall's philosophy is going to be he's going to try to get these lefties out in. So as long as he gets it in, it'll be fine. You get it out over the plate a little bit, miss. That's the fear of throwing in. But as we look at the flag, it looks like it's kind of working back. Good elevated the fastball there. Yeah, working back into the ballpark, which makes pitching in to, to, to these lefties a little safer. Now that requires that a time you order. So Aiden Howe gets his first out right there. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Howe. Remember, the Pitt Community College transfer. This is only his third career college appearance at the D1 level. How Fayetteville Community College. Or Fayetteville. Fay yeah. Fayetteville. Yeah. Great point. I mean, he's getting ahead of, of guys quickly. This is he, He's copying Jake Hunter. Two Blue Bloods here in the state of North Carolina battling it out. And a slow popper for Johnson that drops in. So there's the second hit of the game for ECU. You know, again, he tries to go in on Johnson. And, and I wouldn't even say he caught just a little too much plate. I, I think Johnson did a better job of, of getting inside of that ball and, and, and literally just about placing it out there. I mean, it, it goes in as a hit. It looks like a line drive in the book. But definitely not, not great contact, but just enough. Brian Johnson, a, a red so reminiscent game. with size, stature, and style of play as all-conference standout Lane Hoover, who just graduated last year. It's unique with Cliff Godwin. There's kind of a prototype of player. He sort of fits those, those boxes a lot. Undersized, under-recruited, but making an impact in the top of this order. With more attention over there at first. Yeah, Riley's been a good player as long as he's been here. He's been banged up a lot, and, and that's been uh, been a challenge for him. But now he's healthy and, and making his impact. Johnson on the move. Great throw to second, and they got him. Stevenson the cannon. Yeah, that's, you know, take a chance here in this situation. Again, staff from East Carolina trying to get something started. Great catch and throw, or throw and catch and tag if it, if it, if it be. But... Uh, yeah, that thing was on the money. I know Jacob Cozart's in the ACC, but Stevenson there with a great pop time. All of a sudden, strike one. This is a catching conference. Of course, Georgia Tech may be catcher you right now, but there's Carolina flexing its muscle. One pitch away from a clean inning. Aiden Howe right back to it. And this is the size matchup that NBA scouts are all about. 6'6 six, six pitcher and the 6'5 Carter Cunningham battled it out. Advantage Cunningham. Blast one to right. It's into the jungle. That's one of those he tries to get in, just doesn't quite get it in far enough. And Cunningham being red hot like he is. Uh, deposits that ball over the right field wall. Seventh home run of the year for the Pirates, and there's some offense here in the fifth. Yeah, you see it just, just kind of hung up, a little breaking pitch, and catches way too much of the plate, and Cunningham's all time for it with two strikes. Uh, and, and again, puts a great swing on it, and, and away she goes. We showed you earlier in the inning the donations to the local children's hospital all coming full circle here for East Carolina. And with the wind blowing in today, that's a rare example of putting the ball with some distance on. Yeah, you hit that ball through the traffic, no problem. Plenty strong, big kid like you were alluding to. Now one of the smallest players by height, Jacob Starling. He's got tremendous pop as well. And then you combine that Pablo Sanchez of backyard baseball size. It's hard to find the strike zone here. Yeah, this is a uh, scary pitch for Hall here, 2-0 to a guy that can uh, 
Took an aggressive hack there. Yeah, kind of figured he would be. I mean, that's kind of the one for you two for the team mentality in a 2-0 count, hitters count, 2-0-3-1. You want to get off your best bolt. And How vital now is that throw from Stevenson to keep this a 4-0 game? Oh, big deal. Big deal. And Look at those kids enjoying life on the dugout before this 2-2. That works the count full. And Stevenson wants here. a new ball. Looks like it got scuffed up. Remember starter Olin Johnson, true freshman, was exited in the second inning, struggled to throw strikes. And it's been a bullpen game since for Scott Forbes. Starling shoots one out of play. A lot of people didn't know or didn't think that Starling would, would be back. Thought maybe something would happen with a free agent deal last year, professional baseball. But, uh, man, the uh, Pirate faithful are certainly glad he is. This pop-out should end the inning with Wilkerson there. But it's the power of Carter Cunningham. Right, Jake Hunter's outing to this point. Again, efficient, effective, and, uh, you know, starts right back to work and falls behind this guy. But, again, we've seen him do this and get right back in counts all day. This is the top of a Carolina order that's been held in check. One hit in the first five innings. Here's Alex Madeira. And we'll talk about the world of transfers and bringing in big-time prospects. Played in the Division III program, Arcadia University, was a two-time conference player of the year. And a veteran turning 24 this October. A number that in college baseball these days is nothing new, right? Yeah, well, you know, grad it, transfers and things it, of that nature. It, it, it's funny. Uh, across all of college sports, it's nothing to have uh, the guys, you know, around their mid-20s. Jake Hunter falling behind. Challenges Madeira. And Joey Barini all over it for the first out. 80 pitches right now if you're Jake Hunter. What's the limit? How far do you want to go if you see you? I would think, uh, you know, 90, maybe 95 is, is the max. But he's gotten to this number, again, fairly efficiently with, with not a ton of duress. So you feel like 95 is probably comfortable as long as they're still seeing what they want to see from, you know, mechanics and velocity. He's pounded the zone for a career-high six punch-out so far. And one thing he's done well, just seeing this at bat as well, keeping Carolina off balance with certain pitch sequence. Yeah, no, he sinks that off speed, and then we've seen him with the breaking ball a bunch and then pitch fastball 92, 93 up in the you know top of the zone. Uh, again, I mean, a quality miss right there. Yeah, it's down a little bit, but a, but a quality miss, and that's been the been the strength of his outing today. Again, I, and I keep saying it, but he is just in and around the, the strike zone with every pitch. Tips that one foul. Honeycutt's reached base going back to last year in, in 41 straight games. He will theoretically have it at bat in the ninth, but this is on the line here. Yeah, you know, and the comfort of being able to go after him, one out in the inning, you got a three-run lead. If he's going to hit one, let him hit a solo home run. I, it's, it's a big deal. That is just foul. Hit hard and ruled foul by Steve Sanders, the crew chief over there at third. You know, again, playing the shift and uh, Dixon Williams on the line. If it's fair at all, he would cover it. But Ooh. it is just, Ooh. just Hold foul. Hold on there, Mike. Just foul. Just over that inside corner, possibly. Very close. Love that replay angle as well. So Jake Hunter gets new life. Here's his one, two. Nice take by Honeycutt, who last year was in the top five in the ACC in walks. He walked 49 times, almost a walk per game. Yeah, and in talking with some of their, their folks before, uh, before the game during BP, that was kind of their thing to him was, and his, his willingness to, to be part of the team game was, look, if they're not going to pitch to you, don't get yourself out. You know, take the walk. Take the walk and be happy to have the walk. We need base runners. Uh, late in the game is when they look for him to, to, to expand his zone a little bit more. The Salisbury native, 420 on base percentage coming in. But today he's been a strikeout victim. Two punch outs so far. Hunter searches for a third. 
instead. A good battle brewing. You know, and that's what you get with these quality hitters. That they, they, their their ability to battle with two strikes and kind of wear the pitcher down it, it, it is obviously a huge strength for any of these guys. Jake Hunter back at it on 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. Honeycutt, the second generation Tar Heel. His mom and dad, Leanne and Bob, both played for UNC. And here's the next generation of Pirates having a blast in the outfield. And why not? Gives you a sense of how much it matters. 6,000 plus on hand. There is no room here at Clark LeClaire. And this place has been rocking since inning one. Here's the ninth pitch for Jake Hunter. Let's make it 10. Looks like the Pirates have a lefty. Can't quite see who it is. A little bit blocked out. Warm it up in the pin. One thing this at-bat has done is sped up that bullpen process. That's exactly right. And again, we're at the 90 pitch mark. And that's, that's probably getting close to the magic number. Pitch 10 is fouled away. This is the longest at bat of the day for any Tar Heel. And these are the things that you don't see in the scorebook. They go over to that quality of bat category and, you know, wear it out. Jake Hunter, who's been so good today, and the Carolina hitters know that getting into the bullpen is, is their uh, kind of their mission at this point. Jake Hunter in a battle with Vance Honeycutt. Ball four, good battle. And a one out walk. So Honeycutt's now reached base in 42 straight games. The old Jackie Robinson. Now. There you go. For much different reasons, of course. But now for Carolina, how do you take advantage of a base runner? That hasn't happened all but twice today. No, and look at it. Four run game, you're getting into the to the swing innings. Uh, I would I would expect it would be relatively conservative, especially considering. You're at three, four, five in your lineup. Um, so, but we'll see how Coach Forbes and the staff decides to uh, kind of navigate these waters. Looks like again we may have a little, a little time buying going on as, as uh, I think it's Eric Ritchie down in the uh, Pirate bullpen. Yeah, that is Ritchie, who's already pitched in this series. He's pitched twice this week, Tuesday and then earlier this weekend. That was on Friday night. And I see Coach Goblin making his way out of the dugout, heading out. So we will, uh, we will certainly have a pitching change. We'll take this time out. Round of applause for starter Jake Hunter, who exits here in the sixth. Now, Mike, this is a big inning. Carolina runner on. What, what is Richie tasked to do here in the sixth? Well, there's, you know, there's a couple things. Number one, obviously, control the running game. Uh, hey, let, let me start with fill up the zone through strikes, right? But control the running game. Uh, confidence in fielding the, the bunt out, although I think, again, where we're at in the lineup, I don't know that uh, – down four that is necessarily advantageous. Again, the, the Tar Heels are thinking, let's just scratch away, let's get one. We'd like to get two, cut the thing in half, uh, and get you know get back out there. But Richie's deal is hold them here, throw strikes, let your defense play behind you, soft contact, and find a way to uh, to get the Pirate bats back to the plate. Richie had two big outs in the eighth inning of what that have been Friday's game after the home run given up by Danny Beal. Somebody's third outing of the week kind of has that minor league feel to it as you work and you sort of get a sense from Cliff Godwin who he trusts in the second week of the season. Yeah, we've seen a lot of the same folks out of the uh, you know out of the Pirate Pen to this point. Uh, other than in the in the Ryder weekend, there were uh, there were obviously some some appearances made by freshmen that we we haven't seen since. But uh, yeah, definitely a lot of trust in in, in Eric Ritchie and Lustre Shinkman and Danny Bill, and I'm sure at some point we'll have a chance to see. Uh, you know, those other two guys. Gives you a sense of how important just the seventh game of the year is, right? It's not game 65 yet. We're not come regional time, but you can tell these programs both want to lean on some big arms today, which adds to the drama of a game three with a series on the line, possible top ten votes looming for the winner of this game. Well, let's not forget the all-important bragging rights. I buried the lead. Two in-state foes that, one, respect the heck out of each other, and two, they want to get a big series win here in the non-conference. So Casey Cook back up. He's reached base twice and wastes no time. You know, Richie first off with fastball 90 miles an hour, and we, we've, we've obviously become familiar with Eric uh, 
over the years and good break of ball and should be an interesting matchup with Cook who already has a home run on the season. Cook scoops that one foul. Only one hit for UNC today. That was all the way back in the first inning. Jake Hunter, back-to-back -back quality starts. And as you see right there, Cook is really good with men on the bases. A pirate bullpen that, as a staff, has a sub-2 ERA. Only two weeks in, but one of the better pitching staffs in the country. This was an area that Carolina was very good in last year when trailing after five innings. Eight come from behind wins for Scott Ford's club, part of that regional finalist team a year ago. So the 2-2 is blasted into the air. How about Casey Cook coming to life? And the Tar Heels are back within two. Yeah, I mean, 2-2 uh, count. You know, he kind of struggled uh, on the mound, and Cook sits on that, uh, on that pitch down in the zone. And... You know, down and in to a left-handed hitter is kind of the natural sweet spot. That ball found its way down there, and Cook deposits in the uh, in the right field, almost onto the practice uh, soccer field. Or, I'm sorry, football field. That man is cooking. How about this swing? All of a sudden, power becoming a factor. Teams with home runs and back-to-back -back innings. It's a brand new ball game here in Greenville. Harper, one of the home run leaders in the SEC last year. He brings a ton of power. Has yet to hit one out of the park this year, both at Carolina and here. You know, now it's a matter of can Richie refocus. Again, falling behind two to nothing to a dangerous hitter like Harper. It's certainly not what you want to see on the tail end of, of the home run when you're, again, in the swing part of the game, which will bring uh, pitching coach Austin Knight out to have a little chat. Uh, probably very much to that effect of, hey, man, settle in. we got to have you on. So it doesn't look like he'll be available tonight. 2-0 count to Parks Harbor. Nice use of the breaking ball there. And here's where the power of this Tar Heel lineup really changes things. 11th home run for UNC. Right now, Duke leads the country. They hit 10 home runs down at Coastal last week, but a ton of power here in the state. It's 2-2. Two you see today Duke put up 20 runs on Northwestern while wow. earning the series sweep. They could score them in buckets. Eric Ritchie out of the Pirate pen gets a strikeout. That's the seventh combined K for ECU. And that's what Ritchie's got to be able to do is command that, that, that breaking ball to the strike zone for, with some depth on it. And you'll see it's gotten better and better after the home run. But, I mean, that, that's the Eric Ritchie that has success and in, in, in exactly who the, the Pirates need him to be. Speaking of power, Coastal Carolina today hit four home runs in the first inning against Cincinnati. Wow. And they're up 18-2 to two in the third. Wow. Welcome to the Big 12 for the Bearcats. Anthony D'Onofrio fouls one out. You know, well, this is one of the situations, if, if D'Onofrio can get on and it brings Osuna to the plate, who we, we, we continue to talk about the threat that he is at the dish, you know, you could find yourself in, in a tie ball game in a hurry. And, and what, you know, what the effort here now is for the Tar Heel lineup is to try to keep grinding deeper and deeper to get their guys at the top of the order more as many opportunities as you could get them to win the game late in the game. Eric Ritchie ahead 0-2. Nice fight there from D'Onofrio, who's lined out twice today, one to center, one to left. It'll be interesting to see if uh, if Carolina goes back with Hall, if they go to somebody who's pitching maybe a little more leverage-type situation. Uh, looks like they've got a right-hander up, too, potentially Matthew Mateus. That ball rolls foul. Again, Coach Brandon Riley, he's been locked in today. I'll tell you what, he's getting, uh, getting his work done. And then you see Scott Forbes over there with a quick laugh. He's going to keep his coach accountable over there at first. First-year assistant, the undergraduate assistant coach, Brandon Riley. Earned that degree as well. Here's the 0-2. And then D'Onofrio catches his own foul ball. 
I'll score that a nine at home. That'd be good, good at uh, good at bat for for D'Onofrio. Show a little little eye hand in the pick on the ground ball. Look at this foul ball. Okay, I got that. Ooh. I got it. Whoop 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 whoop. And then the slam with authority, right? The the spike of it. That's a card dealer in Vegas shooting one down the line and perfectly placed against the shift. Could have done that much better for an infield single. Yeah, nothing to be done there. And again, this brings up the uh, the very dangerous Osuna. I don't know what's tougher, catching your own foul ball or hitting one off the end of the bat against the shift. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing of beauty right here. That is uh, that is great luck if you're a Tar Heel and terrible luck if you're a Pirate. Now the shift goes the other way for a dangerous right-handed bat in Alberto Ozuna. Three home runs coming in. And all of a sudden, the pulse of Clark LeClaire Stadium, it has changed quickly in the last 10 minutes. You took the ball literally right out of my head. You can feel the difference in the in the stadium right now. And big deal to get this out and, and, and for the Pirates. And, and obviously, uh, the Tar Heels would want nothing more than to extend this inning. Zoom out in front of the breaking ball. Had a hand bone injury last year. Not a full factor in the lineup, but comes back ready to rock and roll for Coach Scott Forbes. Even in that injured season, had 11 home runs. But the average took a dip. He went from around 300 down to 220 last year. Seems to have figured out this year, Ev, three home runs already and hitting almost 350. That's a hard ground ball. That time the shift is perfect. But UN's two run homer makes this game real interesting. Mateus earned the win on Friday. And here he is in a two run ball game. Top power threat, Jacob Jenkins Cowart, with maybe the deepest pockets in college baseball with that oven mitt in his back pocket. Coward drove in two back in the first. He's one for one today. Give him a second base hit and the sixth hit of the series for JJC. I tell you what, he's really seen it well right now. And again, uh, really good for the for the Pirate fans to see him rebound after you know an otherwise tough year last year. He uses so much of his body in his swing, if that makes sense, Mike. Yeah, he stays stays grounded in his lower half and, and kind of gets that power from the from the ground. And, and that's a big talk with, with with hitting right now is is kind of that whole philosophy. So yeah, he does a great job with it and a lot a lot of credit goes to uh, the, the hit the staff at, at East Carolina. So here are the high school teammates at nearby DH Conley battling it out. In fact, we've heard the coaching staff for D.H. Conley is here in attendance, which even adds a, a level to this matchup. Yeah, interestingly enough, there's been some banner back and forth and, and guys kind of picking their pony here. And the, the overwhelming sentiment is that both both these guys are very much loved by their high school staff. And if they could both win in this situation, that's the way the staff would have it. You see Williams looking to bunt. Instead of slash and a line drive to right that is caught. Good coverage there by D'Onofrio, an advantage pitcher from D.H. Conley. But you know what I have to say? That's almost like both of them win. You know, uh, Dixon Williams puts a good swing on the ball, and and uh, Mateus is able to uh, record the out. So that should leave the staff happy, and we may see them uh, a little bit later in this matchup in, a, in, in another high leverage situation. That's just a neat moment regardless. Two kids who grew up right here in Greenville. Nonetheless, in a two-run game, things get real tight as Justin Wilcoxon comes in. Those first two runs for Carolina took advantage of two defensive mistakes, and it now it really shows you how important Luke Stevenson's play is behind the plate. Yeah, no question. You know, when we knew going into this, it was going to be defense and, 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 and pitching, right? Throwing strikes and and taking advantage of defensive opportunities and we've seen both of those both of those situations lead to, to to kind of the score we have right now the mixed re reaction of cheering for a strike and then cheering for your team yeah that was a little all-speed offering there kind of uh, I think kind of fooled Wilcox a little bit I, I kind of like he might be looking straight fastball there but um, Mateus pulled the string on him and will go to, to the 1-1 pitch. 
Dangerous pickoff over there with Harbor. That was back in the second inning, the wild throw that eventually led to a 3-0 start. It's the two-run homer, though, for Carolina's Casey Cook that has cut into this lead. This is a Taylor May double play. Great scoop by Wilkerson, and he turns it. For the ninth time this year, the Tar Heels flip two. What it means today. You know what, historically, if you'll hear uh, 6,017 because that's tickets sold, I'm going to say there's 7,000 people here. I mean, I think people have found a way to crash the gates or get in. It is a packed house. And, and you know, getting cooler later in the afternoon, but it doesn't look like the, uh, the fans are, are looking to go anywhere. A record-setting day here in Greenville. And a good battle at that. Top of the seventh. Chris Kaler comes out of the pen. And that Visit Myrtle Beach sign just so tempting right now when mm -hmm. it's in the 50s and you just want to get some sunshine. But a great baseball atmosphere instead. Second appearance for Kaler of the week. He threw against Campbell Tuesday. And now will face the bottom third of the UNC lineup. Kaler, one of these fast workers that has to have that pitch right there. He has to have that breaking ball to be successful. Nothing overpowering. He's kind of a right-hander that pitches like a left-hander. 86, 88 on the fastball. Kind of a nibble and bite, guys. He absolutely has to have that breaking ball to have the success that the Pirates need him to have. Jake Hunter went five and a third. Then Richie gives up the home run. Now it's Chris Kaler out of Cliff Godwin's pen. A bullpen that's been taxed in terms of heavy usage. But starters have carried the load this weekend. Six, seven, and five and a third the last three days. You know, when you say that, we've seen guys out of the pen, but nobody's had extended outings out of the pen. You know, that you might see them for two-thirds of an inning. or, or we, I mean, we saw Lunsford Sheepman come in and throw one pitch as a end Has of that appearance. regional feel to it in yeah. terms of bullpen usage. And, and that's the Cliff Gava philosophy. They're, every every game's getting you ready for the postseason. Postseason atmosphere here in Greenville. And ball four starts the inning off for the Tar Heels. You know, the thing that concerns you with a, with, a, with a pitcher like Kaler is that if he doesn't have his best stuff, number one, he works with such a high volume of pitches. In other words, he works very quickly. Uh, if you don't have somebody up to back him up in the event he doesn't have his best stuff, you can see a game get away from you in a hurry. As I say that, I look down, and it looks like the Pirates have two arms up in the bullpen. So Jackson Vandebreek. Whose dad was a standout at LMU, you think of the Hank Gathers tenure, yeah. but also the Vanderbrake family. Some big names in the college ranks. Doesn't that team feel like it was yesterday? Oh, man, it's crazy. This ball is ripped just foul. Jackson, the third brother to play college baseball, and he's had a very good ACC career, second team all conference last year. You know, when you watch hitters against a, a guy like Kaler, it's not only the the, the 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 actual hits or the way they – it's how are they taking pitches? Are they seeing him better than uh, you're comfortable with? Are they really able to lay off the breaking ball with no duress? Um, right now it does look like he's – you know, that he's got Vanderbrook a little bit confused. We've seen a couple check swings and, and counts that he could have been a little more aggressive. So we'll see how this thing shakes out between these two. Kaler on one and two, nibbles outside, not to the agreement of the Pirate faithful in attendance. No, and that's, you know, that's that 86, 87 mile an hour fastball is just off the plate. Uh, and when he's getting that pitch, he's going to be very, very hard to hit. If the umpire's not going to allow that pitch, uh, it might not be the best matchup. Breaking ball left up. This is dangerous to center. Twirling around there, Johnson finds it for the first out. I'll tell you what, that was a really good job, and it, it, you know, some would question maybe the defensive route, but as you'll see as he takes off, the ball starts uh, on, a, on one side of his body as it tails back. You'll see him make the adjustment right there and then settle to make the catch. The hardest ball to catch in the outfield is a mid-depth line drive that's hit right at you. Uh, it's hard to gain perspective in relation to the background. And he's got a 1,000 of his closest friends telling him where the wall is out there at center. Exactly right. Standing room only crowd here. And Clark LeClaire Stadium. And let's face it, if some of the depth perception of that crowd that's out there may be a little skewed. Depending on the time they, they, they've been enjoying uh, pirate beverages from, uh, you know, from about lunchtime on. Uh, record crowd, 6,017 in attendance. And now a rocketed base hit from Colby Wilkerson. 
So here are the Tar Heels bringing the go-ahead runner to the plate in the seventh. Well, and, and I think you're seeing their philosophy with Kaler is go up there and hunt the fastball. The 86, 88, it's not going to overpower these guys. Again, they're not trying to do a whole lot other than, and I keep saying it, live in the middle of the field, right? Live in the heart of the field. Uh, this this could be this could be it for Kaler. I don't know if they'll make the change here, but the slows walk out, and it looks like we do have somebody maybe entering the game for the Pirates. Maybe word's already been sent down, just no appearance from, from Cliff Galwood yet. One of the elite back end arms, Danny Beal is warming up for ECU. Well, that's kind of kind of strange. You know, we saw Danny a little earlier with the wrap on his shoulder. Uh, maybe it was a heat wrap. Maybe just kind of trying to keep it, it a loose. As Shaquille O'Neal says, it's icy to dole the pain and hot to relax it away. Go. There you go. Maybe that's what we saw. There's one of the closers for ECU, Danny Beal, who earned the save yesterday. And here comes Coach Godwin going out to uh, to apparently make the change. He, he does. Ethan's brother, Connor, was a standout in an all-conference elite player here at East Carolina. He's now in the AAA of the Orioles organization. He was an All-American here at ECU. Had an incredible year last year, and it seems like just a matter of time before he gets an opportunity to break through. It's, it's kind of a testament that he's not in the big leagues to the strength of, of what the Orioles have put together. What a run back to the MLB playoffs here recently. So Gavin Gallagher will pitch it here for the Tar Heels. Scott Forbes going to his bench. And that's the nature of this game. Will Cat and Mouse. Gallagher, the freshman out of Apex from the Pro 5 Academy. It's right-handed heavy here in the top of Scott Forbes' lineup. That pitch is called inside for a two-hour count. Where was that blow? You can hear uh, <laughs> you the hear disdain, it clear, the disdain sure. and the concern of the uh, Pirate fans. Just want to make sure the umpires being fair. How about this drive? Gavin Gallagher to left. It's deep and gone. The true freshman puts the Tar Heels in front. You know, and that's, that shows you how strong that young man is. I don't think he got all that. Kind of like he got it off the end of the bat, but just enough to bustle it out of the ballpark and flip the scoreboard, and the uh, Tar Heels take a one-run lead. What a time for your second career home run. See, just a fastball kind of caught a little bit too much played and doesn't necessarily get it all. Great effort by Nowak, just came up a little bit short. And Scott Forbes, a huge fan of that big swing. And that'll bring uh, Coach Galvin back out of the dugout. And looks like we have a, may have another change. Yeah, pitching change in order here for East Carolina. It's a little bit based off the uh, success that Honeycutt's had against him this weekend already. Had the game-winning home run Friday and a big swing there. And you're right, Danny Beal's third appearance of this weekend series. Wanting to follow in the footsteps of Kay Denton of Oral Roberts as the national stopper of the year. That'll certainly help. Jumps out 0-2 now has a few pitches that he could show Honeycutt to maybe set up the uh, the attempted out pitch. Uh, Honeycutt's had success against Danny Bill's breaking ball this weekend. That ball hits Honeycutt. And this inning continues with a hit-by-pitch. You know, it only one out, and again, doesn't get any easier bringing Casey Cook and Parks Harbor to the plate. A much different approach offensively here in innings six and seven than what we saw in the first five. Yeah, and I think that's a testament to, to the strength of the pitching of Jake Hunter. You know, hard to find rhythm against a guy that was doing kind of as he willed, and the bullpen is not, uh, not, not, not delivered in the same manner. Here's Casey Cook who changed this game just last inning with the home run. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, it, it, that's that's the, that's the deal with this with this Tar Heel, you know, offense, and, and really both sides. But we know that the, that the Hills can score them in buckets, and Casey Cook got it started. 
That sun becomes a major factor over there. Yeah, you know, the last thing you could do now if you're, uh, if you're a pirate has become tentative, you, you still have to go and play and compete, uh, battle, kind of erase the nerves, understand you're playing in a one-run game. Uh, a double play here would be huge. Nice breaking ball there for Beal. The power of Carolina. We told you coming in, nearly 10 runs a game offensively. It's come at the right time. You know, and in this shift, I would be interested to see Cook's a good runner. Uh, it would be tough uh, potentially to turn the double play on the left-handed hitting Cook, who, again, he's a step closer and, and again, a good runner. Honeycutt, no break out there himself, can, can really run. So uh, could be a big part of this with the defensive strategy with, with Barini playing right behind the bag, even on the second base side. Now Beals 1-2, Veers outside. This has been commonplace in a Cliff Godwin bullpen to have a side armor. Different look. There goes Honeycutt. Casey Cook able to fight it off. Everybody Remember, it was Honeycutt's walk that forced Jake Hunter out of the game. And the next thing you know, Cook makes it 4-2. to Yep, you're right. Tar Heels have done a good job of late hitting with two strikes. Had Honeycutt leaning again, he's able to get back. The battle continues here on two and two. This is not like the pro game. There are different elements to the pickoff. Yeah, now it's a commitment to the plate, and he's, you know, it, Again, wanting to keep him around there as much as he can. Uh, at some point, you got to deliver the pitch. Third time's the charm. Honeycutt and the Tar Heels have been aggressive this year. Vance is three of four. He had 15 steals last season. That one's not even close. It's a full count. Yeah, you know, you don't expect nerves from a senior, but but this is a unusual circumstance, although he's been in leverage situations throughout his career. Uh, but they know, again, they know how big this game is, and sometimes, is he, sometimes the effort to be perfect causes you to be totally imperfect. In this series finale, Carolina has jumped in front. Now the payoff pitch. Good fight. It was the late-inning heroics Friday that earned the Tar Heels the game one win. ECU's bats really took over yesterday. And early on, it was all Pirates until just last inning. Changing things in a hurry with a two-run shot for this man right here, Casey Cook. You know, and you kind of had to wonder coming into today's game how much of that would carry over and, and would you see the Tar Heels pick right back up where they were and Jake Hunter make sure that didn't happen. Another slow roller. Good scoop there. The only out to first. So it does move Honeycutt in a scoring position. I have the confidence that Cliff Godwin to go back to Danny Beal for the third straight game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, you know, he, he, he made the comment and the commitment early on in the preseason that, that it would be a lot of lugs for Sheepman and, and Danny Beal out of the pen, and uh, he has been true to his word. Beal threw 31 times last year. Here's his third appearance facing Parker Harbor. Yeah. Harbor there a bit late. Pretty good opener, all speed, kind of that Frisbee frisbee arm slot. And the folks just, at Pigeon Ninja love that stuff. Yeah, just avoided, just avoided the bat, right? Harbor, one of the top ten transfer additions in the ACC this year, coming by way of Georgia. And he rocketed a base hit back in the first.
Good play by Danny Beal. And he gets out of the threat. Not before Carolina changes this game in a hurry. It's the true freshman, Gavin Gallagher. That, that, uh, that the staff wants to see is tough ABs and a lot of fight. Luke Nowak leads things off. And a good start out of this Carolina pen for Mateus, the Greenville native. Nowak walked and flew out to right so far. Taken all the way. Hey, that's a breaker ball we hadn't seen called strike a bunch today, but uh, umpire liked that one, and away we go. An ECU team that's been in three one-run games this week. Losses at Campbell and Carolina. Now looking to return the favor here at home in game three. The strength of uh, no watch game last year was that kind of slap the other way, kind of to, to the le you know, left center gap. We've seen him pull a few more balls this season. He's late on the fastball, though, and a good start for Matt Mateus. Yeah, Mateus uh, blew that 91 right by him. Got some late cut action to it. Uh, yeah, he's got great arm side action, always has. And you got to remember, this kid was a uh, Mateus was a super early commit to Carolina, and people in the community watched him grow up. And he, you know, he's kind of an interesting kid from the standpoint he's always thrown really hard and kind of seems like he's peaked at times, but has developed maybe more of a pitching acumen as he's matured and, and kind of bought into what they're doing with him at Carolina. Matt Poston was the closer last year. And that's kind of been the question. Get some big outs here for UNC. From a storybook standpoint, maybe none better than Scott Forbes leaning on the homegrown kid here to get critical no, outs. Exactly right. I, yeah, I agree. Cam Clonch, this is the bottom third of the ECU lineup in a hitter's count. Great pitch. That's a really good 2-0 breaking ball. Matt Mateus from nearby D.H. Conley High School. His Tar Heels, three runs in the top half, have taken the lead for the first time all day. Very close. You know, what you see there is Mateus saying, look, if you're going to give me that spot, I'm going to try to live around it and see exactly how much you'll give me. Moves this to an offensive count for Clonch, and nobody's been better off the bench for the Pirates. I know he's been DHing, but nobody better than uh, this guy late in games. Ball four, and the tying runs at first base. It was the walks that did the Tar Heels in back in the first two innings. You know, you fully expect with the bottom of the order coming up here in Joey Barini that uh, you could expect, I think, Coach Godwin to, to, to put something on, maybe try to get that runner in the score position. Looks like he's going to make a, a change and try to get a little little better base running or a little faster guy out there for Clonch. That's Nathan Chrisman, the sophomore out of China Grove, North Carolina. And if there's any program that can manufacture small ball, East Carolina might be among the best here in this state specifically. No, it's become a trademark of what Cliff does. It's kind of a it gives you a little West Coast baseball feel with how you know how he goes about it. But I fully expect to see uh, see something pretty early in this at bat. That ball skips in. What a nice wow. stop for yeah, Stevenson. That's a great stop. If that ball gets away, the speed of Christmas easily at second. And now Clark Leclerc Stadium has come to life. Homegrown Matt Mateus in a jam late on the pickoff. You know, the deal there is they just throw the pick, see if he shows bunt, but, you know, give you a little bit of chance to – it's kind of like in football. You go out, line up, call timeout, see what they did, and, and, and make your plan off of it. Another attempt. And that one with a little more intent. Grisman and the Pirates, 13 of 14, running the bases this year. This time to the plate, and right down the middle.
ECU last scored on a solo homer for Carter Cunningham. He's coming up soon. The top of the order is up next. Now the 1 1. The hitters count here for ECU. That just off. I mean, he's it's kind of nibble and bite, and it's that kind of honey hole that he's going back to when he needs to pitch is that, uh, that one that's just inside the right hand batter's box. Clark LeClair Stadium coming to life here in the seventh. Runner takes off. It's a hit there and run is. base hit. Chrisman with speed to third and men on the corners. We thought there was a good chance we would see it and I didn't know if it was going to be a drag and I, you know exactly what what Coach Galvin would have in mind but we see the very very well executed hit and run and puts runners on the corners and opens up several different different offensive uh, strategy and opportunities that, 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 that they can run here. So big point in the game, nobody warming uh, in the Hills bullpen, so it looks like it's going to be Mateus's game at least for now. Greenville native Matt Mateus and first a quick chat with Cliff Godwin and his leadoff man, Riley Johnson. Yeah, this is a, just a chat to say, hey, man, you know, it, it, look, these guys, and what people don't recognize, these guys work mental drills all the time about keeping their heart rate down, about not letting the moment be too big for them. And I think that's what you're seeing right here is Coach Guy would just make an effort to say, hey, man, have fun with this. This is a great opportunity for you. There's no pressure here. Just go play baseball. Uh, this is what it's all about. This is what, you know, this is what you dream about in the backyard playing wiffle ball, right? This is, this is what it's, uh, this is what makes it so cool. Listen to this building. Record crowd, 6,017 here in Greenville. And Riley Johnson steps in. A walk and a hit and run single have brought this place to life. Mateus misses, and it's a 2 0 count. The jungle is rocking here in Greenville. Now a 2 0. Misses again. The homegrown Matt Mateus is in a pickle. Clark LeClaire Stadium ready to erupt on this 3 0. Good pitch. Moment not too big for Mateus there. That's pretty impressive. Three runs in the seven, vaulted the Tar Heels back in front. Now it's the Pirates threatening. Looking around the runner and Joey Barini. Again, just an effort to keep you close over there, trying to keep that double play in order. Now the 3-1. Runners moving. This ball is down for a base hit. We are tied in the seventh. I tell you what, they're not afraid to do it at any time, are they? Just a, again, not trying to do more than he's capable of. Call the shortstop in a, in, in, a, in a bad defensive position, cover the bag on the steal. Allows the ball to dump right over his head, run scores. Runner still first and third, one out. With the lone ranked matchup of the day, top 15 clubs. It's Carolina getting out in front in the seventh and a little hit and run back and forth, getting the Pirates right back in it. And Carter Cunningham, his last time up, changed this game. Yeah, one big swing, you know, two strikes, stayed on a, uh, a breaking ball, no doubter. 
drives it out of the ballpark. And again, we've seen momentum go back and forth in these mid to late innings. It was Carter's second home run of the season. And all of a sudden here in the seventh, this is make or break. They may allow him a swing. They may al allow him a swing, a free swing, when he gets into, into the count. Now, obviously, it, it you know folds over to a 1-0 count, a hitter's count a little more. Uh, this is also more likely to be a strike, and if Cliff is going to do something uh, small ball-wise, it might be a good time to do it. Now the 1-0. Cunningham free swinging. Seven hits this weekend for Carter Cunningham. I know folks at home that are listening are thinking, why would you bump with a guy that just hit a home run and is hitting 500? You just got to know uh, Cliff Goblin and how the Pirates play. Now the 1-1. Another free swing and quickly 1-2. and Back-to-back -back hit and run singles have tied this game, and no player swinging the bat better in any team right now than Carter Cunningham. Well, and how about the job Beauvais does? He comes in, falls behind, then catches up and gets, gets the count in his favor, and it opens up what he can do. Here's the one-two. Runners moving on the pitch, so no chance at the double play, and the Pirates take the lead. Pro at bat again, two-strike hitting, infield's back, take what they're giving you. You got the runners, you know, straight still second, and Pirates find a way to manufacture a run. And you got to look at these last three balls that have produced runs, none of which have been blistered, right? You had two kind of C and I dogs, and and then you have the, the rollover ground ball that, that leads to uh, leads to another run scored. So, uh, kind of tough luck here for the uh, for the Tar Heel pitching staff, but great execution by the Pirates. Cliff Goblin begging this crowd to get engaged here for Jacob Starling. And he attacks the first pitch off of Vanderbreak. Here comes another East Carolina run. And Johnson's in there. And again, I mean, would you expect anything else from Jacob Starling? He's done it his entire career. Barrel contact in a clutch moment. Of the runs we've seen scored, that's the only ball that's been hit with any authority. Three runs this inning for ECU, and none have been hit farther than 100 feet. Now the hottest hitter in this Pirate lineup, Jacob Jenkins Cowart. Who already has six hits in the series with some attention over there at first. Yeah, I'm not so sure it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, them try to get starting in the scoring position for the hot J.C. Jenkins Coward aggressive on strike one. Jacob Jenkins Coward's had multiple home runs against ACC opponents in this ballpark, including last year against NC State. Lived up to the moment here in year three. You know, his success comes when he's living in that left center gap, and, and that's got to be his thought now. I mean, he gets off his first swing. Okay, that's your effort to, to pull up all out of the park. His thought has got to be into that left center gap, staying inside the baseball, taking the arm side run with a right-hander, depositing in the left center field. Take strike two. Look, both air has answered the call. I mean, he, you know, he's given up the one, the one ball that was hit hard, and, and could, play could possibly have been made. It would have been a great play, but both airs answered the bell, no question. That was a good pick. Yeah, that was close. And Starling just gets back. And again, I think the anticipation is, okay, if you run him here, he gets thrown out, you lead the inning off uh, with Jenkins Coward next time with a fresh count. East Carolina, two hit and run singles to fuel this inning. Boverzo two. He's drilled out of play. And that's a healthy sign from your hitter, right? You want to, on these, with these two-strike situations, seeing that ball deep, letting it travel, trying to kind of sit and react, and uh, a little tardy on that fastball offering, but, but gets it out of there and gets, a, uh, gets another pitch. Coach Galwood again trying to urge on the fans to get behind the Pirates. 
Three runs this inning for ECU. Another 0-2. Hit hard to second. Nice stab there by Madeira. East Carolina gets the bats rolling again. Yeah, number 11 ECU battling number 15 UNC. And all of a sudden, this back and forth seven inning not only tells you something about early season rankings, but who can make a statement in the national poll? Yeah, man. And look, you, you know, the Tar Heels issued the challenge there in the third, and the Pirates answered in the seventh. And that's what high quality baseball teams do at every level. Everyone chasing number one Wake Forest right now, but this would be. An impressive series win for either team. It was UNC Friday by one, ECU by three yesterday. And a big swing and a changeup for Anthony D'Norfield. Yeah, you know what? Danny Bill leaving the mound after last inning showed some emotion that you don't typically see out of Danny Bill. So we'll see how he handles it. Uh, Here as he you know, kind of settles into the eighth. Bill had three saves last year. And imagine Cliff Goblin with a pretty long leash despite throwing in three straight games. Yeah, it looks like the Pirates have a couple guys down playing toss, but nothing real serious. Nice start to the inning. Base hit for D'Onofrio. And that may be just enough to speed those arms up. There's DiLorenzo and Groller warming up. Great look from our crew. Join the jungle out there in left field. Here comes the huge power threat in the Carolina order. Alberto Ozuna. And this place goes dead quiet for a hitter with nearly 35 career homers in his Carolina tenure. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, Ozuna's much of a threat to bunt, nor do the Pirates, uh, if you look at uh, Dixon Williams' camp back in left field. He'll fall on behind 2-0, and oh, and you're sitting dead red here if you're Ozuna. Oh, 100%. And, and Danny's being fairly careful careful with him. You know, nothing even uh, really around the plate at this point, knowing that if he gets through them, he's got 7-8-9, which is, you know, where, where you want to segment this lineup. If you can if you could get through here with no harm, face 7-8-9, and, and go into the ninth only having to face uh, those top the top ones. That time Ozuna takes all the way. He's yet to reach base today, but has those three hits in the series. You know, that's a dangerous hitter, one that's 0 for on the day that typically uh, produces. The slider gets some swing in for strike two. Yeah, kind of wave at the break of ball there. I mean, uh, good break of ball by, by Bill, and, and maybe uh, Ozuna a little bit surprised about one. Danny Beal, a midseason candidate for National Stopper of the Year. Working here, 2-2. Gets a pace hit. Ozuna goes the other way. Little first to third with D'Onofrio, and here are the Tar Heels threatening. Yeah, Ozuna beats the shift, right? Everybody uh, everybody on the shortstop side of, of second base, and Ozuna just takes the little hanging offering and flips it into center field, the right side of the bag. Both teams have fired counter punches all day long, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's challenge issued and challenge answered, and now uh, looks like that'll bring Cliff Gowan out, uh, and he uh, will most likely make another call to the pin. He has not done it yet. Uh, they're trying to figure out who goes in these roles, and this is an opportunity for, for Aaron to, to not only come out and, and have success in this game, but to get his spot, uh, you know, for future future opportunity down the road. So, you know, again, Groller comes in, grad transfer, uh, from Seton Hall, this is uh, he's no stranger to the mound, but probably this is a little different situation than than he's seen before. 25 innings last year for Grawler up in the Big East. And now he'll face the bottom third of the Carolina order. What a clutch at bat, though, by Alberto Wazuna. He just got subbed out for a pitch runner, Carter French, but to work that opposite field single. Yeah, just a matter, again, of taking what you're given and knowing that they're uh, playing the shift is helpful. Now, I will say, uh, even if they were playing standard defense, if they were playing where the middle infielders would standardly have been, I don't think they'd get to that ball. There would have been, had to have been some type of shift on. But, um, yeah, I mean, again, two-strike hitting, you know, take what you're given. Don't try to do too much. And, and I keep saying it, and I, I know it sounds awfully redundant, but live it in the middle of the field. Good battle brewing here in the eighth inning. 
winner of this game takes the series and gets that nationally ranked series win, which come Selection Monday in May could really play a factor for hosting and seeding and all that stuff, you name it. Here's Luke Stevenson. Good stop by Wilcoxon behind the plate. And ever since Jake Hunter exited the game in the sixth, the Tar Heels have six hits. They've scored five runs, and the offense has come to life. Now a 2-0 count. Again, we're seeing a kind of a soft throwing, nibble and bite left, the 82 on that last offering. Puts him in a 2-0 count. That time he gets a strike. Yep. Coach Ford still one of the few guys down flashing signs, right? It's not just to go straight to the card kind of look. Crawler misses the edge. This is his first appearance in a pirate uniform. You know, you can't help but to wonder, wonder kind of what his pickoff move to first base looks like. I have a feeling uh, we may see it before too long. There's Carter French who checked in for Ozuna. And he's moving. The 3 1's a strike, but the throw is late. So ECU gives up the steal right there, second and third. Dar Hills runners in scoring position with no outs. That was a really good jump from French. Here's the payoff. Got him swinging. Good pitch in his first Pirate debut, Aaron Grawler. Yeah. Falls behind, finds a way to get back in it. Again, that nibble and bite. And looked a little too good to lay off for, uh, for Stevenson. Thoughts on walking the bases loaded here if you're ECU? Well, the man that's going to make that call is coming out, and I would imagine this is going to be another change to a right-hander. Like they had a lefty and righty warming. Pitchers in this matchup gives you a sense of how much this game three means. So Vanderbreak will work ahead in the count. The Tar Heels have not been as small ball exclusive as the Pirates last inning. But could that play a factor? It's been the home run. Cook and Gallagher have kickstarted the Tar Heels. Well, I'm not going to tell you what the what the Pirates desperately want to do is get these next two outs so they don't flip the order, get back to the top uh, with Madeira, Honeycutt, and Cook looming. So, uh, you know, the, the less of, of those guys that you have to see, obviously your, your probabilities of winning the game go up. So this hitter and the next hitter are critical. And the break works to a 3-0 count. Jackson is 0 for 3 today. And then Wilkerson behind him. You know, what you may be seeing here is what you alluded to earlier. Do you uh, do you put him on? And this may be an effort to say, hey, we're not going to give him anything to hit. But if he want to get some set, wants to get himself out like swinging 3-0 there, uh, maybe, you, you know, you allow him to do so. But first look at the cutter from Drew Bryan facing a team captain, multi-year starter Jackson Vandebreek for the Tar Heels. Now the 3-1. There you go, five-pitch walk, and the bases are loaded. Sets up the double play, brings it in order all the way around. Adds drama to a game that doesn't need much else to amp uh, it up. I tell you, man, it doesn't. And I, you know, it's again, it's it's playing with fire. And you see Jackson there talking to his dugout after the last pitch he saw. Give it some tidbits. Second career appearance for. Mr. Baker, Drew Bryan there missing high. A big loopy breaking ball. I'm sure that's not. He don't want to throw that one again. Wilkerson singled in the seventh. And swings right through that one. You know, that's the that's the beauty of the mix, right? He's He's been low 80s, kind of, again, nibble, nibble, nibble. Then he runs a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, which feels like it's 100 behind what, you know, behind what the hitters have seen. That 
hits. Colby Wilkerson, it's a one-run game. Yep. You know, these are the small margin for error situations that we've talked about so much through this game, and um, that's another one that kind of goes in the book as a, you know, as a free pass, free run scored, and you see it just rides up and in on him. And no, 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 uh, no lean by Wilkerson, nothing, just, uh, you know, elbow guard willingness to, to take that pitch off the, off the guard. And here's Gavin Callagher, who just crushed a three-run homer last inning. He's taken all the way. And you can see the offside run that pitch has on her. I mean, the stuff is there. It's just a matter of locating it and, and again, making your pitches in this situation. Oop. Here's the 0-1. Just last inning, Gallagher really changed things. Yeah, I mean, puts a charge in that one, and it's just enough uh, to get out of the ballpark and, and kind of got the, uh, the Tar Heels really rolling in that inning. What do they do here on a 1-1? Remember, a hit by pitch makes it a one-run game. North Carolina with a top 10 impact freshman class. And here comes the pitching coach, Austin Knight. Ties connected to Cliff Godwin. Now in your five, trying to navigate this pitching staff in a tight one. As the 2-1 has popped up, it's got some carry on it. How about Gallagher to the warning track? And Jenkins Cowart there as this game is now tied on the sack fly. Yeah, that one, uh, that had a lot of carry to right. Kind of had J.C. in full retreat, but corrals it, gets it back in, and that, uh, you know, that gets at least records out after the, uh, but, but allowing the run to score. Well, that ball had some late yeah. legs on it, and the folks out there in the jungle were eerily watching. What a performance here for Gallagher. Four RBI off the bench. Yeah, it's a good day. So now in a tie game once again, it's the All-America candidate, Vance Honeycutt. Good work on the slider from the Division Three transfer, Drew Bryan. You know, I think this shows a little confidence that the staff has in Bryan to let him face Honeycutt. Doesn't seem like a great matchup for the Pirates. His last three innings. It's been lead changes of plenty. Tar Heels jumped in front. Pirates regained it. Now Carolina's tied it here in the eighth. Good pitch for strike two. Yeah, really good pitch. And again, I, it, it, that's the deal with him. It, it, it goes back to all the guys we've talked about that don't have the dominant stuff. They've got to be able to have that dividend light ability. Mark LeClaire Stadium on its feet. For the one two. Not even close. Seventh different pitcher used by the Pirates today. In a back and forth series finale. Now the two two. Line fair and a base hit. Vance Honeycutt steps up his first hit of the day, gives the Tar Heels the lead. Another piece of two-strike hitting that we've seen uh, both teams execute all day. Uh, I know I sound like a broken record, but another guy that just doesn't try to do too much, puts a ball in play uh, hard and, you know, has uh, some good luck and an RBI to show for it. Just goes down with that pitch and kind of golfs it out into, uh, into left field. It had been a slow day by Honeycutt standards, but he finds a perfect time to step up. Yep. And that's what, that's what you know, top players do is they deliver uh, in clutch moments. Now the question becomes, who does uh, the Pirates have left out on the pin, and who do you feel like can hold them right here? So East Carolina may see Cook, who homered in the six, comes back in. Only three home runs all of last year for Cook, and he's found a time to heat up. Coach Kyle McGill with the matchup. We've seen him kind of hold serve on that here the last few hitters where they've you know, brought a left-hander in to get a left-hander and uh, vice versa. And, uh, you know, I think this one may be a little more permanent if Costello could get the job done. Here's a pop-up to left. And a sliding catch. Wow, Nowak saves a couple of runs there. But in this eighth of the day for Carolina, Matt Poston out of the bullpen. 
Pitched well against Wagner last weekend. Carolina dominated that series. Much tighter here in this series finale. One run game and Dixon Williams leads things off. The Greenville Pryak hits the first pitch deep to left. This is at the track and enough room for Cook to track that down. Put a charge in that one, just hung up a little bit, didn't, didn't quite catch it flush. And nice play by the left fielder to run back there in front of the uh, in front of the local wildlife to uh, corral that ball for uh, out one. Wildlife's very fitting here in the well, self proclaimed jungle. jungle. It is the jungle. Great atmosphere. Retro crowd, 6,017 in attendance. And I don't think many have left. In a game with lead changes, the last three innings. Here's Justin Wilcoxon. And Boston bringing some pop, 93 right there. Yeah, and you know, he's come in and just command in the zone. I mean, we've seen him throw two pitches, but both of them uh, get ahead type pitches. And uh, that, I mean, that's the way you close big ball games out. Poston was the Tar Heel leader, 31 appearances last year, the Florence Darlington Tech transfer. Part of this revamped bullpen for Scott Forbes. Challenging again. Mighty one up uh, top of the zone, and we've talked about it earlier, if that ball holds its line and has a uh, higher spin rate, it's, uh, it's going to be very difficult to catch up with. Bottom third of this ECU lineup here in the eighth. And a base hit. Wilcoxon brings the tying run to first. We're going to get a pitch on her here, it looks like, for the catcher, Wilcoxon. Every time one of these top 15 teams throws a punch, the haymaker is right back ready. No, to it, it, it is. It's, it's, it's been impressive both ways. And, the resilience of both these clubs to continue to fight and the mental fortitude and the, the just the man just the pure competitive nature that both these teams are are displaying it's 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 a lot of fun to watch and the beauty of college sports so bristol carter the pitch runner we told you about east carolina's aggressive base running two hit runs really fueled the scoring last inning Pitch there in the Luke Nowak. Well, Bristol Carter, another one of these pirates with, with great speed, is kind of up and down the pirate lineup. That they, they have a lot of guys that can really run. Again, tough double play combination with, with Bristol out there at first and, and Nowak at the plate. All of a sudden, the energy amped up here at Clark LeClaire Stadium. One count. Great job by Stevenson right there. Cut call time and look for a new baseball. You know, it's always so funny to be these guys want a new ball. If, as a pitcher, don't you want a ball that's got a little scuff on it, right? Let me, maybe it'll do something a little bit different. And I'm not doing anything illegal, but you know, bring back the spitball days is what I'm hearing. They see enough of the pro of the pro game. And so the two one stays up. Both teams in this top 15 matchup continue to fire back and forth. Huge pitch here from Matt Poston. Oh, a pickoff to first and oh. safe. I'll tell you what, he had him leaning. And interestingly enough, I had a conversation with the coaching staff here, and they, they think a lot of Bristol, but their fear is being a young guy, and he's had so much success everywhere he's been instinctively that situations could get a little bit big. Carter back to first, and the throw hits him. It's been a tough day for Parks Harbor over there with some dangerous pickoff throws. Yeah, Bristol was a little more cautious on that lead, not quite as... Uh, and now he's staring into the bright sun. Not quite as aggressive. Let's see how aggressive Cliff Goblin wants to be here, as time's called. A batter called time. What else can you ask for here? Top 15 matchup and the 3-1. Is high and to right. Nowak gives it a drive. It is out wow. of here. Wow. The East Carolina. 
Carolina Pirates doing it again. Wow. And I, I, I want to say that was like a hit and run or a run and hit. There was something on there. Carter was in motion. No walk. Amazing job. Again. And watch 6,000 plus go bonkers. Uh, another slobber knocker, right? Is Who's going to get up off the mat next? How about week two of the college baseball season and this? I mean, this is incredible. Are we in a super regional? That's what it feels it, it like sure right feels now. Like it. It's incredible. Two national favorites coming in, back and forth, each scoring in the seventh and the eighth. And now Chaz Myers will pitch hit. They'll replace Cam Clonch in this spot. The Pacific transfer, older guy, not, moment not too big for him. Had some success uh, in the first weekend. Off the bat of Myers. So now this sets up, if you're an East Carolina standpoint, they burned almost double-figure arms. That ninth inning still might be in question. No question about it. And you know what, on my baseball bingo card, I did not have home run by Luke Nowak. So I, I think that's a uh, little bit of surprise for everybody. Uh, but nonetheless, a the young man gets the job done. And again, I said it earlier and I'll say it again. I don't think we're done, Ev. I think this thing's going to go back and forth. I, you know, this is one of those that. Uh, what if I told you that was the first career home run for Luke? I, I would, I would completely believe it. That's what's changed this game in the eighth inning. How could you not enjoy college baseball? Well, this ball's popped out of play. No, it's this is all. Uh, this is what it's all about. Winner of this game takes the series and earns a signature top 25 win. This is one of those that's the old cliche that like neither team deserves to lose this ball game. They both fought so hard. Uh, but at the end, somebody's going to come out on top. And I, I'm telling you, I think we're still in for some excitement. Austin in a bit of a jam here in the bottom of the eighth. Still fighting oh. for his life as that ball goes into the Pirate dugout. There's a lot of home run props in college baseball, not the ball off the face. No, that's one you don't want. Luke Nowak changing this game with a go-ahead two-run homer. And Myers evens the count. You know, for Myers, this is climbing towards that quality of bat number where you're seeing X number of pitches and there's, you know, drawing a walk or getting hit by pitch, and obviously the fans are getting behind him again in a 2 2 count. Good slider and pops him with a strikeout. Yeah, a little foul it off into the mid there, I think, but uh, good comeback by Poston to regain himself and get back in it. So Carolina's bullpen delivers a big second out. And with the top of the lineup looming, here's Joey Barini, who's one for three today. That was Joey's first hit of the series. Yeah, off to a little bit of a slow start offensively. He's been a solid defender for him. And, you know, today are, are days that help you feel a little bit better about your numbers. It was his hit and run single that kick started what at the time was a crazy seven. Yeah. Three runs in, and then both teams have since traded a bucket of runs. I'll use one of your terms. There today. you go. A line drive for Barini. That drops in in front of Honeycutt. So 10 hits tonight for the Pirates. You go again, that's big. Two outs and brings the top of the order back up. And <laughs> it's kind of, again, punch and counter punch, and right now the Pirates kind of have them in a corner and slug it away and pick up another run or two. Both staffs have not been afraid to exhaust their bullpens here in this series game three, winner take all. Now Riley Johnson takes one high and in for a strike. Oh, 
Last time I've heard people this upset on a Sunday is when they were the Chick-fil-A drive through There you go. Pardon the humor here. With Mike Mullis, I'm Evan Budjovic. What a dynamic Sunday afternoon. It's been a good one. It's been a great one. Lone top 15 matchup in college baseball, and it's the Pirates of East Carolina back in front on the Luke Nowak home run. Johnson rolls. A nice snap at first. And we go to the ninth inning. So now for East Carolina, it's a young arm. Corey Costello, the true freshman, he'll face Parks Harbor. Who called time and stepped out for a moment to start this inning. Okay, there was a loose ball that came in from the bullpen. Yeah. That pitch did count. Let's see what the freshman has in his bag. It's a 2 0 count. No lead has been safe in this game today. Pirates were up 4 0 in the sixth and cruising, but Carolina has come back with multiple rallies. Yeah, only for the Pirates to answer. So now it's a 3 0 count. That's not even close, a four-pitch walk. So Parks Harbor represents the tying run. Again, that's, you know, just a concern of having the true freshman out there and things that unnerve you as a coach. He, he took a quick look over to the bullpen and, and even to the uh, dugout to see what may be going on, get some instruction, looks like, from the dugout. Caleb Cost, the speedster, comes in off the bench. True freshman out of Atlanta. And now Cliff Godwin's going to make the change. I would think if uh, Lunsford Shinkman is at all available, this is, would be when you would see him. The way this thing goes, everyone's available. Yeah. 16 I combined pitchers. Here's Anthony DeNorfio. Takes 91. And that's what you're going to get with the range. I mean, he's going to be fastball, you know, low 90s. Got a little 78, 80 mile an hour slider. And, and, you know, if you can hit him, you can hit him. There's the slider. Yep, he's just going to come right at you. Carolina scored three in the seventh, three in the eighth, and need one here in the ninth to keep this thing going. Good swing there. The last time the ECU Pirates have won a series in the regular season over Carolina, that was 10 years ago, 2014. That stays up. Yeah, last year was a little different with the two games and then the one that got pushed midweek downstream. So theoretically, Great point. A, a, uh, a, a series win. But uh, to your point, three games in a row, a three-game, true three-game set. Great two count. Well, what a start to this college baseball season, back-to-back -back weekends. Let's see if they put the, uh, the runner in motion here. The payoff. Got him swinging. Good heat from the true freshman. Some emotion right there too, right? Let the big dog eat, unit. Again, that's just rearing back and coming with the uh, old number one. If you can hit it, you can hit it. Is that a major league reference? I mean. I'm all about it, Mike. Thank you. A pinch hitter here. Elliot Dix, the Longwood transfer. He was all conference in the Big South the last two years. We'll check in here for Scott Forbes. Both teams have exhausted their benches. Bottom half of the Tar Heel order. Let's see what true freshman De Jackson DiLorenzo has left as he pounds in a strike. Time run, Caleb Cost over there at first. And that hits Dix. 
And ruled a hit by pitch. It was over the plate. So now the tying runs in scoring position. Yeah. That's the big part of that. And, you know, brings up the young catcher. But uh, that's a hard one. Yeah, ball just got away from him. I mean, I don't think it was a matter of anything that, that, that he necessarily did wrong. It just it just kind of got away from him. And, and, you know, that's just part of it. Austin I going to go out and try to settle him down. And, and UNC will make a pitch running change. Patrick Alvarez will come in to run. Now you start to wonder how many arms does ECU have left in this game? Well, and I think that the conversation here is, okay, a couple things. If they, you know, situationally, okay, what, where are we? Let's be aware of the runners and uh, kind of where, where we're thinking play-wise. I, I do see another arm tossing down in the Pirate. So with Alvarez, the go-ahead run, he's coming to run it first. Here is a huge at-bat for Luke Stevenson. Pounds in a strike. Also important to note with McChrystal behind the plate, new catcher, blocking the ball, keeping it out in front of you is a huge deal. Slow roller to first, and the only play is at the bag. So one out to decide this thing. It all comes down to this, Jackson Vandebreek versus the true freshman, Jackson DiLorenzo. Any thought to walk in Vandebreek? No, I was just sitting here thinking about it, looking over the dugout, seeing, you know, it's kind of nice to have that force everywhere, but. Here we go, game on the line, series on the line. Way outside. Again, I think it's worth noting McChrystal is, is huge in this deal, obviously keeping everything in front of him. Colby Wilkerson up next if given the opportunity. And the ball gets away! Tying run, Koss scores! And East Carolina gives up the tying run. Yeah, and I don't think that's on McChrystal. I think that's just a yank pitch, and be interested to look at the replay on it. I mean, you'd like to see him be, be a little more agile out to get over there and knock that thing down somehow, but fans are screaming for him to tag the plate. He is, definitely touched it. Yeah, he, he fell over it, I thought. So now in a tie game, hand break takes a big hack. Well, you wouldn't have expected anything else, would you? Runs in four straight innings for the Tar Heels. And now the captain and the senior faces a true freshman. Again outside. You know, DeLorenzo can keep him right here. The, the Pirates come back with the top of their order. And obviously facing some guys down, you know, kind of in the depths of the Tar Heel pin as well. The 3-1 is lifted on the infield. There's Jacob Starling. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Carolina takes advantage of a walk. Game. At that point, it was 4-0. It's been banana since. And now we start the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, I mean, the outing of Jake Hunter early on was so good that it kind of made the game feel ho-hum. And now, since his exit, we've, again, we've seen, it's, it's literally been the tale of two games. That pitch stays outside. This is a huge Elon transfer. Two-time All-CAA, Shea Sprague. He was a starter for the Phoenix. And now he's coming into a huge spot here in Greenville. Cunningham pops it out of play. Winner of this game gets a signature top 25 series win. And with both bullpens pretty tested. Important one two pitch from Sprague to Cunningham. Yes, 
Art McClare Stadium itching for drama here in the ninth. Sprague's 2-2. He's drilled out of play. Cunningham's been almost unstoppable in this series. Yeah. Seven for 11. Tough at bats. You know, he finds himself in two strike counts, fights himself through it. He's had a home run on two strikes. So, um, yeah, he, he's his resolve is, is immeasurable. Another 2 2 from Sprague. Got him swinging. Good pitch. This is a well tested arm. An ace for the Phoenix now coming in for the Tar Heels. You know, I would wonder if we look back at the uh, Elon East Carolina previous games, if there's been a, uh, a matchup with, with Sprague facing some of these pirate hitters. Certainly out of this magnitude as Jacob Starling digs in. And he attacks the first pitch. Starling hits it. Foul, foul. ball. Hold your horses. Foul ball. Doesn't quite make it out of the park off the wall out there. Foul ball. Clark and Claire Stadium is ready to have an earthquake. Instead, the battle continues. Keeps it more fair and a base hit. A one out single for East Carolina. If anybody thrives in the big moment, it's it's Starlin. He he lives for it. And now maybe the most clutch hitter, Jacob Jenkins Cowart, comes up. Record crowd, 6,017 here in attendance. Carolina tied it in the top half. And the Pirates look to win the series here on home turf. Sprague's first pitch is fair into the corner. Jacob Starling hustling to third. He's going to hold him at third, yep. And he stops right See there. See where that ball goes. Clutch double for JJC. This game's had everything tonight, Mike. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's been awesome. It has been truly awesome. You know, you think about what this park has seen in the last couple weeks between the stirring ovation for Parker Bird getting his first collegiate at bat to now a game like this. If this is how it's going to be all year, bud, we're going to have a special season. Top 15 matchup comes down to this, and it's the homegrown product, Dixon Williams, from right here in Greenville. With arms ready in the Carolina pen. Be interested to see how the Tar Heels play this. You think about kids from Pitt County. That's right here locally in Greenville. Got a whole bunch in this moment. And it comes down to Dixon Williams here with a winning run at third base. You know, and this young man's seen tons of games in this ballpark and always wanted to be a part of the uh, Electric environment. It didn't have the year he wanted last year, you know, but was was resilient with the summer ball. Had a great summer. Uh, just tore the cover off the ball. Came back with absolute determination to, to be a pirate, to be a meaningful pirate. And here you see him in the biggest moment of of his collegiate career to this point. But I have all ideas. This won't be the end of the road for either one of these teams. However, this shakes out tonight. Dixon Williams, one for us. Where no lead's been safe in this game. 6,000 plus ready to go. Bonkers here. If this go ahead run comes in. These are moments Cliff Godwin and his program have dreamed of in a top 25 matchup. You know, interesting going to the right hander to face the left hander at Williams here, but right hander Bristol Carter's on deck. So I still don't think we've seen exactly how Carolina's going to play this thing out. Looks like infield in right now. Obviously trying to cut down the winning run at the plate. Yeah, they're going to put him on. Dixon Williams, an intentional walk. Yeah, they're going to put him on to face the right-hander. That'll bring the the, uh, the true freshman, Bristol Carter, to the plate. 
How about this on your bingo card? Bristol Carter checks in for his 11th career at bat, and the game is on the line right here. You know, we saw him earlier pitch running, and, and this is a, the highest touted guy uh, in this recruiting class for East Carolina as far as position players go. So I think they like the situation here. He's a guy that uh, makes a lot of contact. Game on the line. Carter takes ball one, the freshman from Northwest Guilford High School. He's the number one draft prospect of all freshmen of the American Athletic. Big pitch for Ryan Fisher out of the pen. Gives up a base hit, and the Pirates take the series over North Carolina. True freshman Bristol Carter secures a top 15 series win. A dynamic battle here in front of a sold out Clark LeClaire Stadium.